6 o'clock, I'd like to start the meeting. Uh, the first one we're going to start with is community input. Is there any community input? I have something. Okay. I'd like to see the front door and the walls painted in you know, the surrounding wall. It just takes away from all the nice work that was done. Consent minutes, uh, consent of the calendar, approval of the minutes for the 13th and 14th first. Um, there's actually, we need to approve minutes for the yep. 8th, the 9th, and the 20th as well. All right, so I'm okay with the minutes. I don't know about you, but I'm okay with the minutes for the 13th, 14th, and the 20th. I still got to look at the 9th because I had a question about them. Okay. All right. Back up six. Oh, I did? Okay, yeah. perfect. So I'm okay with the minutes for the 9th, 10th, 13th, 14th, and 20th. Are you okay with those? Um, September 8th, 9th, 20th. Sorry, let me tell you. I got that written down. In morning. addition to the 13th and the 14th. I think I, I thought, did I comment? You did. On one, yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I took care of that. Right. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, all second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so next up is, and I'm going to let you talk about it. I know with the COVID's been pretty low and, and staff are coming and the state of New Hampshire, um, state of New Hampshire guidelines, so proposal of change of the mask mandate, you want to add to that? Um, so, uh, no, I actually um, um, have heard um, from other people, too, that people are um, kind of optionally wearing masks in the building. So I wanted to propose that um, we consider changing the mask mandate to be optional for those who are fully vaccinated. Yep, I'm okay with that. Um, you, um, I'll make the motion, actually. Yeah, I will second that. Okay, we'll be up for discussion. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Um, do, I mean, I think if we wanted to ask for public input on that, concerns from residents coming in the building, potentially, um, we could hear that if we wanted. Okay. I'm just, I'm just saying, where, I, where, I, where I've seen wherever I go, like, you know, the goal and plan of fitness, for instance, there's no mask mandate there, so it says, you know, the vaccinated people, so. Um, and I think Jody Carnes um, actually shared um, some information about Rochester's policy. Right. Um, and they do have a policy. The only thing I think they have different is they ask for people to show their cards. If you're, um, if you're an employee. If you're, right, exactly. Right. If you're an employee and you are not wearing a mask. Yep. Um, so I, I think probably there's a a variation of policy out there. But right now we're approving, right now with the approval, it's approval for uh, NASA optional, I mean NASA not optional, NASA, NASA optional for vaccinated people. Right. That's, that's the motion. Yeah, and I'm, I would second that. So we do all in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the other thing I'm just going to say, and the removal of drought restrictions, for what I see and what I've read, the whole state, definitely this area of the state, but the whole state is pretty much out of drought conditions. So I can't see of any reason to have any restrictions going, going um, forward. And actually, um, Carolyn suggested that we address this before she left. Okay. She suggested that we remove it, so I, I'm fine with that. Yep. I mean, I'll, uh, I'll, make a, I'll make a motion to remove any drought restrictions. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And Dan, you're you're on the you're next up. Oh, okay. Um, 
All right, so just a little background. Um, so CNJ Trailways, um, they lease five buses from the state. Um, and uh, in years past, they've uh, registered the buses. These are apportioned plates, meaning that the, the buses travel uh, from state to state. So an apportioned plate is, is for that. So apportioned plates, you begin the registration in the town or city, and then you have to finish it in Concord. Uh, you know. So it's always that way with proportion plates. Um, the problem with their registrations for these five buses was that there's no mention of CNJ anywhere on the registration. So no, it doesn't say any ownership, or it didn't, I should say. Um, so anyway, I went to the DMV and we got that straightened out. Now, Jalbert Leasing is mentioned, like written right there as an additional owner on the registrations. So we're, t we're good to go with the DMV. Uh, we can, you know, register the buses here. Um, in years past, I've been told, I haven't found it anywhere in, in any written record, that the town has waived the fees, the municipal fees, for these five buses. Um, and I think since there's a new board, um, this is something that you, you should discuss and, and, and decide upon. We can't really go on just what somebody told us happened years ago, uh, because there's, I don't know of any record of, of ever it being decided that we're waiving these fees. There's no history? Not that I have found um, anywhere. So it's really just more like, you know, word of mouth, you know, that it's been going on. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it's, um, you know, it's something that deserves a discussion with the board, uh, whether or not you want to keep going with this policy of waiving the fees for the CNJ trailways or just for these five buses or or not. Um, I, so I did have the opportunity to speak to the last town clerk and <coughs> did confirm that for the state buses that they have been waiving the fees mm -hmm. for years. Um, so I don't know that it's necessarily necessarily um, foreign to us. Um, I think it's just a matter of um, who made that decision and should we continue, right? Exactly. I, I'm just, you know, I think it's, a, we, I can't find a record of anyone actually, you know, putting that in writing and making this decision. I think maybe it's appropriate to, to revisit it and just say, okay, you know, yay or nay, and, you know, we have this policy. It, that probably would be a good, good mm -hmm. idea, you know, at least in the minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we can, in so the future. Has it moved forward with CNJ at all? Still, I'm sorry? Is he, the CNJ is still in limbo for these five buses now, right? We haven't done anything with, with them, uh, right. you know, but, you know, as soon as I get the word that, you know, we're okay with waiving the fees or not, uh, I can go right ahead. You know, it's not going to take I mean, I'm, I'm okay with waiving the fees, but I guess it was my understanding that we weren't necessarily waiving the fees since they were, like, leased by the state and it's a federal program. Either the federal government, I, I believe that the federal government would be paying because See, it's, it's a lease from... Job at transportation for those five buses. Right, and right. The state or well, the federal government technically owns. I mean, with the apportioned plates, you know, like I said, they'd be starting the registration here and then they would be finishing it with the state. So whatever they own to the state, that would happen there. Um, but municipal, you know, anything like the municipal fees, just you know, whatever a town or city collects. Okay. Um, so that, just that specific part of it is what has been waived. You know, we have no say over whether the state's going to collect money for them, from them or not on this. Um, apparently it's a program, according to Jim Jalbert from CNJ, that this is like, the, I think the second to last year of this program. So this, this might be, you know, this year and then next year and then that's it with this, with this lease program they have. So. Mm -hmm. Is there um, any documentation on this lease program? That um, that's something, you know, I think CNJ would have to provide. Um, they're okay. Like, I, I talked with uh, the DMV about it. Um, I talked with the assistant bureau chief of, um, assistant chief of the, the registration bureau. Um, and um, she was comfortable. Uh, they had provided her with documentation about the lease program with the state and Apparently, there's only like two bus companies in the whole state that do this still. Um, at one point, there were five of them. Now it's you know dwindled down to two. And like I said, I think it's like kind of at the tail end of this program, you know. Um, so they, they're totally clear with the state. It's just coming down to the town and whether we want to give them the green light and do what you know we have been doing. 
you know, uh, that hasn't been necessarily documented, but, you know, word of mouth anyway. What, do you know what the other uh, program is that does this? Oh, uh, I think it's called Boston Express out of Londonderry, I think. I think that's what I was told by, by Jim Jalbert. Yeah. And they have the same policy in London? I do not know that. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. How much money are we talking about? Uh, each bus um, is around a little over three thousand dollars per bus, and there are five buses, so somewhere between fifteen and sixteen thousand dollars we're talking about. Took the town. Mm -hmm. Somebody, did you have a comment? No, I, I oh. just wanted to, to the to the town. Oh, yeah, the those, that would be the yeah. municipal yeah. fees for each bus. Um, would be, a, I think, a little over $3,000 per bus for the municipal fee. So, I mean, I'd like, to, I'd like to be able to settle it and just, you know, make a decision tonight. I'd say well, if we do that, we should make policy, you know, so going forward, it won't be addressed to you over here. Um, so we would add it to our policy. Um, agreed, but I'm just, I still don't, I guess I still don't understand the fifteen to $16,000 waived. Is that... Revenue every year that was just waived. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. Mm -hmm. and, ex and accepted and no policy or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money. What's that? It is a lot of money. So. You know what? Maybe we need to do a little research and um, you know, talk to one in there and see how they handle it. And that doesn't necessarily mean we have to do that. but. Well, and also probably, uh, I guess whatever the federal federal program is that he goes to. So I think it's a state, I mean, it's a state program. A state program. Yeah. What's the right. timeline for um, registering these days? They're, the the uh, registrations um, expire at the end of October. All right. But I was told that um, with the state, they like to, they like to get them in early, you know. Um, so it seemed to me that there was some degree of urgency, you know, but still they, they don't expire until the end of October. So we don't necessarily have to make a decision tonight. No. No. There's just some 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 piece of the puzzle doesn't seem to be connected here. I mean, I'm sure it was all in the up and up and how we did it. But I think there would be some kind of paperwork. There's no paper, no paperwork for the last whatever amount of years is done. I, I have not found mm -hmm. anything that you know. Um, I was, I believe the program started in the early 2000s, um, so maybe if we, you know, dug a little further back, there might be some documentation, uh, I just kind of come across okay. it, you know, in my perusings. And just out of curiosity, was the previous town clerk able to provide you any information about how it was, like, done? Uh, like, no, just that the fees were waived. I don't think there would be any problem with our current program for me to waive the, like, the logistics of it. Right? I'm not worried about that at all. Yep. Uh, on my end, you know, it's, it, it's just a matter of like taking a line item out, you know, um, I'm almost positive. So that's not, it, I think because we're running this, the new, you know, clerk work system, I believe with the old software we use, it probably would have been more of a, there would have been more of an obstacle in doing it, doing it this way, um, to waive the fees. So, um. so I know you. I think you've explained this at the very beginning of the conversation. Yeah. But when we talked a little while ago, you were even you were even apprehensive about waiving the fees because you were told well, otherwise from them. Well, uh, I was I was only apprehensive about waiving the fees. Um, I was I was my concern was not so much waiving the fees was it was just. Um, the fact that their name wasn't anywhere on the registrations that they gave me, you know, okay. that that's what that from from my perspective, that that's what concerns me because I, being a you know an agent of the DMV, I, I need to follow DMV rules and okay. um, every and it, it I had quite a runaround with the DMV on this and, and um, uh, for a while I thought we weren't going to be able to do this at all um, and then finally the, the assistant bureau chief came back to me and says okay ah, I got a solution this is what we're going to do. So I'm totally 100% comfortable with, with going ahead with these registrations. It's just a matter of the town waiting to be. All right, and 
I don't want to speak for all three of us, but I believe going forward they're going to be waived because that's how it's been, and I'm sure it makes sense. But I, I don't think tonight is the night to make that decision until we just understand a little more. Agreed. Um, but I also want to make sure that CJ knows that we're working on it and we're not, we're not trying to yeah. shelf it or anything like sure, that. Sure, sure. I've been in contact with uh, okay. Becky over there, and I can, I can send him an email tomorrow and All right. tell him where, where you know, it's in the works. And, All right. Yeah. I, are you both comfortable with that? I'm fine with that. I am fine with that. All right. Do you think we should get a copy of the, their agreement? Yeah, this agreement? Um, it might might make some sense for it. for the kind of for the future. Yes. And uh, like I said, I have. I mean, yeah, if they have it, let's see yeah. if we can get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah whatever can help us determine. Right, right, how right. It's done. Yeah. Sure. All right. Nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. And I just want to thank the Georgia Stars once again. And thanks for the uh, thank you for the incident that happened last week. Oh, yeah. And you're listening to it all. Didn't, I didn't see it in the paper, but I would much rather hear it from somebody. Wow. Get home at night and follow me. That's great. So thanks for the Thank you, 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 so thank My you. superiors know what's going on. Thank you for that. No, he's all right. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he, they actually helped him walk off the machine. Yeah, I know so that. he was uh, okay as far as that goes. He was back to talk with Osha a couple before the scene was cleared. Uh, just a, I actually can't charge anybody with because we don't have any certificates. <laughs> Paver operator was hit by a dump truck. Uh, paving machine was hit by a dump truck and spun the paver operator around in the seat and pinned him in the seat. They had to use the jaws of life to get him up. Right, Sean? <laughs> but uh, they, uh, that was the end of the day, a little quicker than. And he took a day off, but he's feeling okay now. They, he did not work Friday, I don't, I mean Thursday, I don't know what the situation is there, but he was sore. Very, very understandable. <laughs> Just to protect the town, OSHA did come and investigate. Yeah, I, I knew that. So, yeah. I was there afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I got a couple POs, and there'll be more to come as soon as I get my bill from C&J, unfortunately. Uh, need to put a set of tires on the pickup truck for Sullivan Oops. and I got a quote from Sullivan Tire for $877.80 at the state bid price for tires. $877.80. That's for four new tires, mounting balance, and get rid of the tires. Uh, the PO for that will be 2036. Okay. I'll, move forward. Okay. I'll move forward PO 2036 for Sullivan Tire for $877.80. Second. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. I have another one for Poria Guidelines. That's the company that does our line striking. Uh, the line item is twenty five hundred, so I put it in for that. It's probably going to come under that because we're not going to. I, I don't see the sense of paying, uh, striping Jesse Doe in a condition it's in. Oh, okay. What, what was the name of the company? It's Poria Guidelines, out of Athol, Mass. They do the town of Bill. If they do us both at the same time, where we don't have a lot of roads, it's cheaper to use that company than it is to have somebody else come in and do it. Uh, Bo is two zero three eight. And that's in our line striping line for $2,500. And what roads are they going to be doing? Uh, all the ones we have striping on would be Church, Foundry, Bear Road, and Clement. Okay. And we usually do Jesse Doe, but like I said, I can't see wasting the money on that this year. We do have any income of doing something with it next year. They're going to put lines on Clement? Yes. How about, um, are those the only streets that we strike? Besides Jesse Doe? That's the only ones that, that 
the yeah, town fed straight. Okay. And the rest of them, I mean, the rest of them, like the state rules, so they take care of that part. Okay. All right. So I move forward to PO number 203A for Peoria. Peoria guidelines. Peoria guidelines for $2,500. Um, second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Is that going to be done? Uh, about 10 o'clock tonight. Seriously? Yeah, they called me last week. They said, we're getting ready to go back to Massachusetts, so if you want that price. Do you know how many miles that is, George? Not really. I'm not exactly sure. It's Barrow, whatever. That, I think that might be what, two miles there, mile, just under a mile on Clement uh, Church Street, just here around the corner and then boundary. So it's so much a, so much a foot for, for the bank. And it's been running just under two thousand usually. So okay. Um, we can vote on that. Okay. Okay. We can. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. Okay. Okay. You don't want to talk about roads tonight. You can use the agenda. You want to hold off on um, the road planning? Yes. Um, well, actually, as we go through budget, probably we might have some. Okay, I'll just take that. So, yeah. And you want to wait on the rest of the stuff until we go through budget. Can I get some stuff to talk about and see you. I got a question. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to buying used equipment if the town board is not opposed to buying used equipment. However, that becomes an issue if it's in a CIP plan. Is there a way of buying equipment that comes available, like say a used piece of equipment worth half the price or so of a, like a payloader or a small mini escalator, if to say half the price of what a new one would cost, can we pull from CIP money during the year to purchase that piece of equipment? No, uh, I'm going to say no because it's going to go as a warrant. I have to be, but can there be a stipulation put in the warrant for that? Uh, well, so yeah. are you asking for a warrant for them to consider a new warrant article? I, I would think it would make sense to have a warrant article okay as long as the piece of equipment is in the CIP. And say, like two years ago, I came across having a chance to buy a sidewalk machine for half the price that we could have bought it, but it was in December. We know they're not going to hold this piece of equipment. You've got to buy these deals when they're available. Like you buy a car. If you've seen a car that's used, you know. How long do they last? What's that? The machines that you buy. Are they payloaders? Yeah. A payloader, you're going to get 20 years out of it, you know, yes. a payloader or something like that. You know, but you're going to pay $150,000, $175,000 for it. But if you could get a least return payloader or a least return mini excavator for half that cost, it's a benefit to both. You know, I mean, we're not going to use it like a town or a city of Dover or a city of Rochester. But using a piece of equipment, you know, I mean, why do we use it? Like in the summertime, a mini excavator would be handy as heck to do our shoulder work that's we're far behind, going, as everybody knows. And, you know, you can't do it with a backhoe. The backhoe, you move three feet and you've got to keep moving, you know, and you can't do a good job with it. So, what I would say about that, George, is we, we you and the board, you know, and you come up with a formulated plan of something that you wanted to get anyway, you knew you wanted to get it, something comes up, so then we write a warrant article that says X amount of money, and if a piece of equipment comes up that, it'll be worded right, a piece of equipment comes up that the town could use, and it's a cheaper, it's a much better deal than we'd allocate, say, $50,000 for it, and then it's up to really, then it's up to the, the voters. Mm -hmm. No, but, it's up to the select board to have, to get the okay to make that purchase if it's in the, if it's already in the CIP. As long as it, no, let me finish. So as long as it gets the you know, it goes to the warrant article and the Correct. town approves. Well, right. Then it's up to us. But I, let me, right. let me that, finish. Yes, That's what I'm trying to, to say. The, so what you, what, we want, what you want to do is present it well in the article saying this is what you want it for. So when our voters, when people vote, they say, I think it's a good okay, idea. Okay, that's, that's what I'm asking. This so is, that's how I would approach that. And I don't know if you guys well, have any more advice about that. The problem is um, the CAP plan is already formulated for this year. And it's well, going I, I, I was talking yeah. to uh, Joe Dash today. He yeah. said you can still put them too in there. It doesn't have to be put this year, but put it in the plan. Oh, for future. For oh, future. Yes. It's not for this right. year. Yep. No, but I mean, it's something to have in a window in case. You know, in case something, you know, by the time we're ready to buy one or something like that, like if next year they want to put some money into that, for those pieces of equipment, and you happen to see one that 
you know, you can buy it for half the price, but no one. I'm just looking at the cost of the town and everything else, you know, the benefit. I like that idea. You know, I mean, that's, you don't need a brand new piece of equipment. So what, what would, um, do, have you presented, well, you'll have to present the needs for it at the time that it gets considered by the CIP committee? Right, he, yeah. Yeah, he asked me if I just put those pieces in there so he can put it in the CIP okay. as future planning, you know. Mm -hmm. But so, I, that's, I just want to know if, you know, because there is no other options to buy a piece of equipment other than going to the boat. Right. But that's, you lose those deals. You know, and it's like if you have a brand new car, I mean, if you have a car you're interested in sitting on the lot, and it, no, I it's not going to sit there forever. Right, I think the timing is the issue. Um, you know, when they plan um, what they're going to um, spend out of capital, um, you know, it, I think that's going to be the issue. Like, do you, are you saying bring it forward every single year as a warrant article in case you find something? Right, have that as an, have that in there as a way of purchasing a piece of used equipment. Have something in there of a way of purchasing a piece of used equipment. As long as you have it in a plan that, you know, if it's a piece of equipment that you already have in a plan to buy, is what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Not something that, oh, we need this yesterday, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, something to look at that you're looking at to purchase later on, and if you have a chance to go unused for half the money or what have you, you know, at least return some time, you can get a pretty good deal on a piece of equipment. Or, you know, on a, on So it's a waiver to the existing ones, right? When we go up, a waiver to the existing ones, or... Change. Well, yeah, you would, you would not, it would be taking that piece out of the CIP for future, right. you know, I mean, you'd be, you know, I mean, you'd keep it for replacement down the road, however, but, I mean, to put it into purchase at, at a lower price, I would think, makes sense to anybody, and, you know, I mean, companies buy used equipment all the time because they can get good deals on them, and if I could get a couple pieces of non Jerusalem equipment for you, going to trade it, mm. you know, I mean, those guys take care of their equipment, and I'm not just saying that. But I know how some of these guys take care of their equipment. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get a good piece of equipment sometime. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about how they would word that on the warrant article for, uh, for appropriating that money. Um, you know, that, that would be the, the part right. that I have to figure I mean, out. It, it's just a thought I've been having, in a, you know, because there is a lot of times you get a chance, you know, someone, we get mail all the time about used equipment that's available out there that's in half, you know, at good shape and you can buy it for, you know, a portion of the money you need. It's not like you're buying a fire truck, it's not like you're buying something else. A fire truck, you want to have new from the get go or something like that, but you know, a piece of highway equipment, you can get away with buying used equipment. Well, I don't know, I can't speak for fire, but I mean, I would think if you could, if they wanted to get a $200,000 fire engine and it was a year old and they get it for $100,000 and it was the same truck, I would think they would be interested in that. I don't want to speak for fire, but I would yeah, I'm not going there. <laughs> They don't lease many fire trucks for a year. <laughs> no, I'm saying if it was a year old. 200, it ain't even in the ballpark. I just made up numbers. Yeah. I wasn't trying to bring that on. No, 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 no. No, but I just, you know, it's something I think we ought to start looking at. I think it's a good idea. And know, and just for purposes of saving money on equipment and stuff like that, you know. Right, and it's just how we presented the warrant and, and the town people know what we're getting it for, and it's really we're trying to save money. In the big picture. So, so I just wanted to bring it. And another thing I gotta ask with that accident last week, mm -hmm. that tied up our police officer we had on chief for five hours. Can that be built for that trucking company that caused the accident? Uh, we'll have to get an opinion about that. <laughs> I, we don't know. Um, uh, we can't answer that for sure, but. I'm thinking we should be able to charge somebody else for the uh, time that we so can we, use. Can we go through our insurance company? Your insurance? We do. I mean, we could have you know. there, I bet. I would agree. Somebody should be able to answer that question. I would think. I would say, Georgia, that that, that should happen. We did. We have that ability to do that a lot in the fire department. If there's something like that, somebody that caused an accident, whether it's negligence or something else, we can bill for that stuff. So I'm sure he can do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, those guys are tied up too. I mean, everyone's tied up for you know a good five hours. Why should we pay for a police duty? To, you know, watch that intersection for us if, you know, it's going to be bad for the accident. You're telling me just spending three hours writing a report or four hours. Um, has it ever happened before? I don't know, but, it, you know, I mean. So, you know, so a lot of times if a drunk driver hits a pole or something and we're tied up for an extended amount of time, mm -hmm. the same thing could happen is, is the, 
police department can bill for the detail time. Mm -hmm. We can bill for it. The power company bills for the cost of the pole, all of that, and for time and, and insurance pays for all of that. Okay. Some some towns actually have written into their policy. policy is that if an out-of-town resident gets in an accident in town, that the fire department actually bills for the fire department's time, yeah, sure. all of that, and insurance companies will pay that. Huh. It becomes a slippery slope of... Billing what? for services, you gotta be careful with that, but it's, it's routine. Yeah. Same thing with us, we have an incident with the train going through town, which we've had in the past, we build a railroad. So I would think in this situation, I don't want to say easier, but since it's a company, as opposed to a private resident, I would think it would be easier to have the insurance pay it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a thought, but I, I know it's it's doable. You know, I mean, just the way that the insurance company would have to look into it, but uh, why should we be paying five hours for them to be standing by at the scene doing the job they were doing for us, but now they were doing it for the accident? Who manages our insurance? Do you um what was the name of the company that was doing the trucking? Oh, okay. They're gonna uh, I was talking with the safety guy it was on scene of the accident of course with Brox. Just happened to be on scene before it even happened. It was Brox though? No, it's not a Brox truck. It's B and D contracting out of Litchfield, New Hampshire. LLC. The company that owned the truck that got the yep. paint. <clears throat> so they were working with Brock? So? Yeah, there's some contract. They, they, they always hire them trucks. They don't have them on their own, so they, they all hire them. Well, that's, that's a good point brought up to it, especially since it's one company working with another company. Well, <laughs> we've had some stories with that company, so probably we'll have to get a little bit out of it if we can. The well, one thing with that, that you got to remember if that if you do bill for that and you get remuneration for it, you usually go back into the general fund. It's not anything that's going to go to his department or right. ours or to PD. The general fund receives that. Right. Funds. Yeah, I know it's still going to come out of our budget one way or another, but it's still, it comes back to the town. It's not the yeah, the yeah. town is, the town is getting great. something back. So. All right, great. Anything else, Chris? No, we can talk. We we'll talk about the uh, budget. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Fire is up. Yeah, John. Answer. John's not going to make it. Okay. Um, he said that Sean might be able to talk about this. Um, to, uh, security uh, security system. Okay. Um, it, it, from Burns, anything on that? On security for coming We already have. Yeah, we have the quote from Burns. Okay. We received that at the same time we received the fire alarm quote. Oh, that was part of that same quote? Um, For town it was a separate quote, but okay. we received it at the same time. Uh, he has a copy, Caroline has a copy, or had a copy, um, and I have a copy. Did you email it to us by chance? Um, no. It wasn't my two emails, so. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I have Could you have had it? Yeah, yeah, I had it on my laptop. Yeah, well, so, I mean, we obviously won't have a chance to have a look at that, Sean, so um, if you could send it, we can, I think we'll probably want to take a look at that before we make any comments. Yes. Um, so we can push that out again to the next meeting. Yep, I agree. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, just while we're on that topic, did you physically sign the town hall? Yes. Okay. Get okay, finished. I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's what I said. Town okay. Hall. The Town Hall contract for Burns because yes. somehow you don't the have fire department got signed twice instead of the <laughs> Town Hall. Oh. oh. No, I think I didn't. I think you signed it last week. I didn't look at it. Right. It, it was okay. last week because we noticed that. Oh. Okay. That's why well, there was a delay of. Because okay. you guys approved the PO four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But somehow. They printed the wrong one. They printed the same one they twice. Okay. Okay. I'll ask Chuck. Um, yeah. If you signed like last, sure last week, that was the one that I signed. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll ask Chuck. Um, 
I'll ask him to reprint it and one of us can come in and sign it. Thank you. Let me go to a lot. You've been busy. I can probably reprint it right now if you guys want. Oh, can you connect here? I probably can. Okay. <laughs> so we don't have any per se fire department business. I don't have any POs or anything coming. Okay. Probably will next week, but we're here to address the yep. emails that you sent us about budgetary questions. You want to do that now? <laughs> we're going to try to get through all the other stuff, right. and then go into budget workshop. Yeah, we won't be too long. Though. Yeah, yeah. Should, right. we should be right. pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Because, like I said, I don't have any okay. business on that end of it yet. So. Okay, sounds good. But you continue along with your other. You, yeah. you did have more the, bad. You have the access and the, and the camera system on the. Agenda. I don't know if you guys want to talk about that for the fire department. Um, yes, actually, um, it is. On the so, um, so did phone. you have a chance to look at Sean's proposal, Jack? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm yeah. pretty sure the one we're talking about that's been fluctuating around for a couple of weeks. Um, right? So you'd sent an email, kind of describing what you were proposing for work. Yep. Um, yes, I've seen that. Okay. So let me, I'll just bring um, Jack to speak a little bit, because I don't know, I thought I forwarded all the emails. I probably did read it, but I read a lot this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Sean is proposing um, to do the work for the security cameras and access cards that people have on um, We have a, also have a bid from the um, Burns security system. And um, so, um, Sean, do you want to just kind of describe a little bit about your background and um, so Jack can kind of... Sure. Um, so I've been in IT for a little over 28 years. Um, started out from working for a hospital, worked for Cisco for 17 years, now I work for another manufacturer called Infolox. Um, last 18 months ago when the pandemic started, um, fire department basically had no access. So we were unable to join Zoom meetings from the fire station. We were able to do any of that. Um, we worked with the select board to put a whole new network system in the fire department with wireless access points, network drops in all of the offices, etc. Part of that system has the ability to add both cameras and door access control. So my proposal to the board was to add those components onto the existing work that I already did yeah. 18 months ago. Um, cheaper for the town. What's the cost of that? So, let me try to tell you the right numbers. Um, basically, we can do all of it for a little bit under $11,000. Um, the Burns quote was closer to for the same amount of equipment. Basically, what I offer to do is um, you know, do it at the standard detail rate that the town normally pays if the police department does anything, um, and then just charge them for the, the actual exact cost of the equipment, just like I did when I did it before. Mm -hmm. I think it was well, my box Cat 5, Cat 6. They pay exactly what I pay. The equipment gets ordered from the manufacturer. It is not the company that I work for, it's a company called Ubiquity. Um, and, you, know, you guys pay you know, the, the, what I pay for the equipment, reimburse um, for that. Do we need these? So, or are they are nice to have, or do we need them? I guess it's so, right easy. now, we have no way of telling who gets into the fire station at what time. Okay. We've had issues where we've had people hanging out in the parking lot at the fire station, bouncing balls off the side of the, side of the fire station, behind the fire station doing stuff. So it's a town building. Uh, it's also a, a public shelter. So you know, some of the cameras would cover you know, common areas in the building. If somebody falls and gets hurt, we'll actually have a recording of that, you know, much like you have here at Town Hall. Right? You have access control, you have cameras here at Town Hall. Uh, it was part of the one article for 25000 that was approved by the town. Mm -hmm. This is just like, authorization to spend the money. Yeah. 
Um, so what was our cost for the alarm system, the fire alarm system? 14,000 and some change, just under that, I think, and it's probably going to come in lower because we decided to do both. So we said there'd be additional cost savings for that. <clears throat> um, so when um, Sean originally proposed this, um, one of my concerns that I put forward was um, he's not operating under an LLC, um, or so he's operating basically as an individual. Um, so my concerns were... Um, Is there any legal issue? I don't know if there's a legal issue. That's a good point. Um, but um, also, if there was a problem, you know, we wouldn't have any real guarantee. Um, so I suggested we wait until we have three members to kind of hash it out. Mm -hmm. um, so if, for example, you did the work and hit by a bus tomorrow, I can say that because it could happen. Um, we don't have any, any recourse on any issues um, and support for it. Um, but I, I understand that you know there's definitely a good cost savings at the same time. So if I could just address that, um, Ubiquity Equipment, the gentleman that does our IT work, mm -hmm. actually installed some Ubiquity Equipment after I put it in the fire station here. Mm -hmm. So it is a common, it's not a specialized equipment that I'm building custom for it, it's a standard equipment, so he would be able to, to log in to, and do that. Um, today, John does the same type of access control as does Will for here, as far as turning users on and off. So it all of the, the data. And the day, equipment's under warranty and everything, right? Or no? the, technically, yes, the equipment is under warranty from the manufacturer. Um, you know, it, it's it's like all computer equipment, right? The warranty is only as good as, you know, for a very short amount of time compared to how long most of these systems last. I mean, you look at the camera system that's in here and, you know, the fire alarm system is 20 years old. The warranty was five years mm -hmm. for certain components and can even last them. Yeah, I wasn't looking for the long term. I was right. Just, no, no, yeah. I, was just it, it, I mean, if something falters in the first couple of years, it's that's going to be recovered. Yeah, that's going to be covered. and. You know, as I, I said in my email, I'll pay for it initially and the town will reimburse me. So if the equipment didn't get installed for some reason, you know, the, the town wouldn't ever reimburse me for it. So there's not a lot of liability. I would be working as a town employee. So technically the town would be covered just like I was to do anything else. You know, it's much like having George built the shelter for the recycling or, or other things. Mm -hmm. you know, it's within my capabilities. Good. It just saves you money. What do you think? The way I look at it is it's, my personal opinion is I'm okay with it. Not that I want to be okay with it. Um, but I'm, I look at it as Sean has done a lot of extra, extra work for us. Um, when the burner went down, we've done a lot of research for us. Um, we've been very helpful to the town. Um, and I think this is being helpful, so okay. my opinion is I'm okay with it. I am um, too. Um, so just one, a couple questions, Sean. So the proposal that Burns gave us, mm -hmm. what is their guarantee and their support offering for the system? So theirs is, yeah, I'm just trying to bring it back up so that I can, it's the same contract that you signed for the fire alarm system. Yep. You know, it, it's, there's no warranty on it, there's no maintenance of it, you pay your contract if you want to continue that, for that maintenance for you know, them coming in and testing it every year. Um, so, you know, most of the individual components are, you know, between two and five hundred dollars. It's when you add up, and you say, you know, there's ten cameras and there's, you know, six hard drives and there's a switch and there's all of these individual things. So. My recommendation would be you don't pay for an extended warranty on that stuff because the cost of buying one of the components is cheaper. Right. Yeah. Um, is this all low voltage work? It no, is. Nothing? It's all Cat 6. It's all okay. uh, Cat 6 are actually lower DC voltage door openers, things like that. So it's not electrical work. Okay. Um, everything is covered by the, the power over Ethernet switch. As far as the Cat 6 cabling, I've been trained on how to install and terminate it. Um, you know, if you guys come down to the fire station and look at the work that I do versus the work that was done here, it, it's, it's not me. All of 
my boxes mm -hmm. come down and they're in conduit and they go to a, yeah. an actual outlet. Oh, I am coming there. Mm -hmm. In fact, I want to set something up. Yeah. Love to see it. Great. Yeah. Um, you anyone? I want to set something up and go down there. Good. Yeah. Um, so does this require a building permit? Um, it's over. It does not. Twenty five hundred dollars. It does not because it's equipment. So just like you wouldn't say, you know, hey, we're buying ten new computers, you need to buy, you need to have a building permit for it. Mm -hmm. um, the actual low voltage installation, you're talking, you know, twelve drops. It's going to be, you know, a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars for those drops. Okay. So it would not require a, a building permit. I'm thinking in terms of dollars, and we have the building inspector sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, because I think it's more about the dollar value than it is um, about the safety. Um, and uh, Tom, you, I mean, feel free to chime in on that. Um, excuse me, as far as the dollar value goes, the, the fee would be waived for a municipal organization anyway. So, I mean, there wouldn't be a permit fee regardless of the, of the dollar amount. And I agree, a chief would be pretty much just the equipment low voltage that we wouldn't be looking for a permit for him. Okay. Great. He wants to come down and inspect it, if that would make the board feel fine, I'm, I'm more than happy to have him do that. It's, um, and like I said, when you come down, you'll see the existing work that's done. And okay. Pretty um, particular. So I guess the one thing I'll ask for um, is that when we get billed for this, we get an itemized list of equipment. Um, and, and labor um, as well. Um, and that will also help us with our inventory that Lorraine has been um, talking about for a while. Um, so. It's on the list. Yeah. It's it's on the list. list. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I had mentioned that in my email that you guys will get you know, itemized receipts if I go and buy you know, Cat 5 and the RJ45 Keystone Jacks, all of that will be okay. itemized out. And that's the same thing I did before. Okay. So you can see. Okay. okay. That's all I have for yep. questions and. So we move forward to anything tonight, or there's nothing really to present tonight, right? Uh, I think it's just a matter of us um, agreeing to move forward with Sean's proposal. Okay. Yeah, we did put together a purchase order because that way it allows me to have something to to put in for reimbursement for. Okay. Um, and we just went with the the remaining funds out of that line item. So, the, so the entire cost of the fire alarm system and um, the access and security system falls within the, the constraints of the warrant. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It'll, it'll, you're right. It's probably going to be under that. Okay. Or I know it's going to be under that. I just don't have the. Okay. You guys want to make a motion, and I'll second it. I'll make the motion, and I'll second it. But I'm just want trying to make sure what would the exact motion is. Just to continue forward with the remainder of the work under the warranty article. As long as it comes dollars $25,000. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Jack, you were the question earlier about is this a nice to have or a want to have? Yes. Yep. When we had the warrant article money, we originally went for getting the fire alarm system put in. We had X dollars there for that. And we had the 25 for the whole warrant article. So what was left over, we were able to look at this system. Sean's ability is to do it. We were able to upgrade it. Because the doors and our access system to the fire station is, is poor at best. And we could upgrade it and get some state-of-the-art stuff with cameras to also secure the area. PD loves the idea of cameras because it can also view that intersection should there ever be an issue there. They would be able to get that information off of that. So it covers a lot of nice to haves. Yeah. Not want, but nice to haves under the warrant article, which we already um, had to go through the public and they approved it. We're getting a lot of bang for the buck for uh, for what we uh, submitted for. We've had six times just in the last month and a half that we've come. PD's called us, or Dover headquarters has called us and said your doors are open, side doors are open. We don't know why. Were they? But they're open. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Two in the morning, I get a call to go to the fire station and fix the door. Did you talk to the firefighters about it? We've talked to the firefighters. The, the Every time we have a call, make sure it's locked when you leave and secured. So it's just the, the mechanism itself is a whole failure. We, we've already put in a Sometimes it goes all the way down and goes right back up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we you, you like it's going down. Well, no, these are the actual man doors. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the man doors. Don't entry doors. So you're replacing those? We're, we're replacing the lock sets and the 
push bars to open them, all of that is getting replaced, and this is the actual system. Right now, there's a keypad on the door. The problem is, is those keypads have been there. Well, the past people know if it should not be yours. So those, that's the only access is via a keypad? You type in a number on the keypad, and that allows you to get in. We have no record of who's coming and going. With this system, we'll be able to say, this person came into the station at this time, so we'll know definitively everybody that goes into that station. And then you look at the cameras and you can say, hey, you know, it's not just this one person, it was these three people with them, or, mm -hmm. you know, there's this going on in the parking lot. The PD will actually be able to log in and look at the cameras remotely. So, you know, they can actually see if something's going on at the station, in front of the station. So you have one code for the building that everybody uses? Which is part of the reason it needs to change. Because <laughs> you've had turnover as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. A lot of money sits in that station. For what would they steal, though? Uh, so, you know, you could put somebody in there that has a specific need and wants to go in and steal air packs or steal firefighter gear or just go in and cause vandalism. There's an awful lot of stuff in that station that has. It would have to be firefighters. Yeah, yeah. But it could be somebody in there just on a dare. Or, or reselling the equipment. Reselling the equipment. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. You know, yeah. a, a package. It's, it's a business in that. Several thousand dollars. The, you know, the hydraulic tools that the town purchased several years ago we used to wall batteries that are very expensive. Mm -hmm. I bet I could see something generic there, like that. There's lots of mm -hmm. stuff that, that would be very easy to, to resell. And I got a quick question for you guys off, off topic a little bit. The Jaws of Life. Mm -hmm. Old Jaws of Life that we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The guys move here. The reason we got the new appeal was because the old appeal was just so outdated, right? It wasn't that you guys used it up. It was old and getting to the point of being unserviceable. It's still in service. It still works. It's still fine. It's our backup. But it was getting to the point where if we had taken it in, there's a failure of it. They probably would not be able to repair it. And the new one we got, with it being electric, its capabilities is, is six to eight fold over what the old system is. The hydraulic tools have a lot so more pushing in power than the hydraulic system. Right, so you got the new one and then the old one's still back up. It's yeah. In case it, and then if it well, because we carry on the up. first new engine, and if that engine goes out of mutual aid, well, that goes with it. We don't strip stuff off. But we still have the benefit of having the older system still in town on the utility in case we have another incident. The, the old system is the second oldest in New Hampshire. Well, I, 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 I won't go into detail. I had a resident talk <laughs> this past week and he was, he was under the impression that you guys had used the whole thing up. Yeah, the and I'm like, the, the old one, and I'm like, it was kind of more of an outda outdated type piece of equipment than it was that they used it so much that it didn't work no more. Yeah, That's more that. correct. I hear that all the time. Is that, that more correct, though? Yes, you don't want to give much more correct. But I hear that all the time about the fire department. Everybody seems to know more about it than <laughs> they think they do. And if they want to know, send them to me. I'm more than willing to take anybody in, train them, show them, educate them, because that's what my job is. Instead of the rumors flying around, see you have to clarify something. Which is totally it just wrong. came up out of conversation. I know. I, feel all free to have a conversation my way. way. You so all that jack wasn't just that. It went all over the place. Uh, I, I hear it every day. day. Okay. I believe it here. Thank you. Thanks. Well, so we'll just take our seat and let everybody else. Yeah, we won't be too long. I think we'll get through these next things pretty quickly. <laughs> I tried to organize it in a way. So I want to go to the trust fund actions for 2020. So I'm not sure what that is. So we got an email, um, and maybe Salome, um, so she's uh, part of the trustees of the trust fund. Um, might give Actually, I did see this. I did see it. As a, I think it was a large amount of money. Oh, yes. It's like, about five and six in the morning out of there. Yeah. That okay. are being transferred to the town. Okay. And so and going out of the town. there's yeah. others from the the town has to put money in. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Okay, that was really good. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, so really so I really wanted to get some background on next steps for us um, okay. since we don't have any background on this. No. Um, so I thought, was hoping that Sound would help us um, All right. let us know. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. please. So it looks like there's a couple options for us to approve um, the movement of money, and that's to write a letter um, or present receipts. Is that correct? I can't remember the numbers. Yeah, that's true. The email, that's so that's true. Dana takes care of everything so now okay. that Julia and I are not really that responsible. Okay. I, I think that's <coughs> accurate. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
So she attached a spreadsheet that outlines the movement of funds that need to happen in 2021. Uh, it includes funds to be received from the town and to be dispersed to the town. For the trustees to disperse funds, there needs to be documentation of expenses incurred. This has to be done in two, oh, it's been done two ways in the past, providing receipts from the vendors of the equipment or service, or a signed request from the select board stating the work of the warrant article has been accomplished and requesting the amount to be dispersed. So, um, in terms, I think we probably need to get with Chuck on some of these payments that have happened um, and confirm, well, we need to confirm what's been paid and what has not been paid. Let's see. When does and this have to be done, Mark? I didn't say. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, before the end of the fiscal year. Oh, okay. Right. It, it doesn't have a date on it. Um, so what I would say we would do is um, get with Chuck to see what's been paid, see if we have receipts for those items, um, and that any work um, that is needs to be paid has been completed. So um, does anybody from the board want to volunteer to get with Chuck on that? Um, you know what? I'll volunteer to get with Chuck on that. You can look online. I'll see Chuck this week about Okay. Um, so I'll we'll see we, Chuck tomorrow anyway. Oh, um, so he's on vacation he, next yeah, week. He's on vacation. Next week. Yeah, next, next week he's on. All right. So we just really need to get a list from him of any bills that have come in for these warrants. So what I'll do is I'll reach out to Chuck tomorrow on the phone. Yeah. And I, I might come and see him anyway because we have a couple of things to look for. Maybe I'll do that. But yeah. Okay. I'll reach out to Chuck. All right, sounds good. Start with a few things. Well, Kim's out. Um, I'm going to jump down to the icon on the back. That's me. I'm going to shake hands, but oh, okay. <laughs> we wait so, that till. I'll just bring up something real quick about the, the portico structure that I had talked to Jay Stevens, the civil engineer, about it. And he had, I don't, I don't know the gentleman's name, he came out that was the PD. Yeah, and he said that structurally for now, you know, putting the columns on, I don't know if you guys know this structure was fine. And then come probably spring, I'm going to say spring, that we should be looking at replacing the brickwork <coughs> just for structure. I don't know if you were up to date on that at all. I, I hadn't seen that yet. Okay, so I think I'll, I'll feel, on, feel on that one. Great. And then the reason we have here is um, building, and I'll let Kim open a little bit to a building inspector oversight. Mm -hmm. um, it's on Phil. Phil Rosie. Say again. Phil Rosie, R O Z Z I. Um, yeah, he came in. He said um, that he was done restoring and painting. And so Chuck asked if um, we wanted to take a look at it and um, pay him. And so, yeah. 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 So um, what I had been um, thinking, and I asked Tom to kind of entertain our conversation. Because I think we talked a little bit about um, some oversight, even when Caroline was here, about some of the projects that are being done. Yep, this um, problem with it. Um, I think you have a little bit of background. Did, yeah. did Caroline ask you to look at the plumbing? Um, she hadn't yet, no. Okay, all right. I think she was waiting to see if there was going to be a facilities director, mm -hmm. a position established, person hired, or... Right. No, she hadn't, she hadn't requested it. Okay. Um, so, one of the things we kind of talked about is if Tom would be willing to kind of oversee some of the work that is being done to make sure it's done correctly um, and, you know, kind of sign off that we're ready to pay for it. Right. So, what we're hoping for now until we decide how we're going to do 
what we're going to do with how we're going to handle the facilities directly and, and care of the buildings. Um, just a couple small projects that we've had, like the plumbing done and the portico work. Sign, before we sign off, sure. if you didn't mind just, I mean, like walking through, I don't mind walking through, just to make sure the plumbing done, see any issues. Portico I've looked at, um, the engineers looked at it, so I don't know if there's any, any real issues that you didn't have to sign off on that. I'm perfectly signing off on that whole thing right now. Um, but just go. Can yeah. I just add one thing? Sure. I, before I paid anybody, I would make them come back and clean up all the paint chips on the ground. Ah, <laughs> lead paint. That's what we're going to figure. That's the thing that mm. we should probably look at. And stuff. That, yeah. that could be lead paint in the wrong okay. person. Well, I'm, sure, I'm sure that is lead paint. Okay. You even have so, it in your building. There's no way it's not. That's it's really, lead. There's no way it's not. Right. It's yeah. not. And that's, that's getting tracked in your building, Paul, and they also use out front for a bus stop with kids yes, every morning. So they, they could do a lot better cleaning that up. Okay, on that topic, I did question the painters weeks ago about whether or not it was like paint. And they both said that they had tested it and it wasn't. It wasn't. There was some, um, I think it was 77, there been a couple of paintings and a couple of upgrades. And, um, after 77, lead paint hasn't been manufactured. So, I mean, I didn't see the test results yet. It's probably something, and it's certainly just from an aesthetic standpoint, it would make sense. Yeah, so so hopefully the information is right. It's not that thing. Secondly, I guess we should look at that. Is it this job whether or not it's cleaned up and everything like that? I can't really notice, but are you sure? Did you notice? Yes. I picked up a screw there and I saw some other hard work. All right. There's quite a bit of uh, paint scrapings and whatnot, pretty much all over. All right. I'll reach out. I guess I'll reach out for that. So we do have a name. I have a couple of ways to contact. I have someone too. You'll have to get out of here. Rosy, I O S S I, something that was last name. R O Z Z I. Bill Rosy. Um, I'm gonna make my before I'm done tonight. I'll make sure I get my two lists to figure out because we've got a few things. Okay. Yep. Um, all right. So. So. Anything else to that? Though? Yeah. Um, well, actually, yes. I wanted to actually have a discussion with Tom about um, his interest in maybe availability to help kind of manage um, any work that has to happen to the building. Um, just to so see. Fill that role. Yes. Um, and I don't know. So I don't know if we would consider it, you know, offering the facilities director position to you or how we would frame it, but you of all people probably have the most expertise in the needs of a building. <laughs> I'm just, so I thought you I know, won't contradict. I guess we frame it like this if, if 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 we need to expend X amount of money since we have you know we had whatever we would say building inspectors and facilities director is going to be six hours a week. I don't think we need that much, but you know, if, if you deem yourself using two or three hours a week to do this to keep up with them, you just get paid on you. That's, that's yeah, what I'm thinking. More of if you have time, I should say. Too, and the interest. Than, you know, yeah, and the interest. Um, we would just... Do we have a job description? Um, there's a, um, a, a bullet list of things that, um, that we're hoping for, but it isn't really concrete. Uh, we can share it with you. Yeah, but you could. I, I'd certainly be open to think about it. I mean, you, you could probably help write it. Yes, could. <laughs> um, Carol Lane had sent it, so let me see if I can put it in the Right, so I think it's probably you want to make sure that it's a right, the right fit for you as well. And, um, in terms of time, though, Tom, um, do you think that um, you would have time for something like that? Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm paid for seven hours a week, and I mean, a lot of that is permits and inspections. But um, if there wasn't too many more. The way I look at it, and I don't want to speak for Ed and George, but I will. I, I feel that Ed and George feel pretty comfortable maintaining and understanding what the buildings do. I don't think they necessarily feel that they need. Again, I'm speaking for you, but I don't think they feel like you need the facilities direct in agree. there very often. Nope, I would agree. The fire department, mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot in the last few years that have done the fire department, so I don't see a very strong need for a facilities director, facilities director there either. Right. Town Hall would probably be the 
broad the issue. Yeah. Sure. Does that, does that make sense to you? Think? It does. So. Um, I mean, certainly the fire and um, how many folks can talk about it if they want. Yeah. Um, so I don't see it being, you know, a bunch of hours a week. Yeah. I'm thinking for that now, maybe just a couple. You know, one week it might be three or four, and one week it might be none. So I don't, we don't have a whole lot going into it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I'll have to dig through the email, Tom, but I can forward it to you. Um, I'm going to have to make a decision today. I mean, if you wouldn't mind, just um, if we can agree that for the current projects, you know, we could use some of these kind of site models and, and then we could be able to do those hours and then stop the facilities to write those things. Um, if we have to agree on who to be at his current rate. Right. As well. That's true. And then you know, we have a longer term discussion once we look at what the needs are. Of course, yeah. Okay. Jack, can you do a quick? I was going to say, why don't we wait, have more look at it, like, and then we can adjust to make sure we're paying on top of the Yeah, I don't think it's like we have to decide time. That was my point. It's, you know, I want to make sure to take care of it. Yeah, but it, yeah, and, and the, the building and stuff not getting the clock in the front slide. Yeah, I, I, you can't go a couple of weeks, but just give the details, maybe next week we can chat with you. Right. Right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I did get um, some feedback from a resident town outside of the building um, needing some attention. Um, so, I think... <laughs> Accurate assessment. Uh, that would be one of the things I for sure uh, about the requirements of this is to do a general assessment of the condition, maybe um, help us find the right people to do the work. Not necessarily to do the work, Tom, but yes. <laughs> to find the right people um, and just kind of the oversight that the work is getting done. Um, that's what I'm doing. I agree. Yeah. I think it would be a good fit. Kind of like almost. We talked about it and doing some work on that, so if you're trying to find out, we can make sure we don't have to work. You know, I said, when we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, put the dog in the eye and cross the TV again, so perfect. Just two things to add. No, no more. I'm only kidding. Okay. When, when the fire alarm system gets done, yep. that would be probably two weeks worth of daily check ins, probably. And anytime they're in the PD, they'll actually have a PD detail down there um, because they can't be in the police department area without somebody from the PD being in the, the building because of the evidence and the CGIS requirements and all that. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at schedule. They're supposed to come in October to, to start that. did the furnace stuff, I came in twice a day, at least sometimes three or four times a day if they had questions and stuff, to, to babysit that project because it's not just just overseeing it, it's, no, it's being there. They, they have a question, hey, where is this going to go, where can I do this, how can I do that, and someone from the town has to be there to represent and say, Yes, you could run that wire off through this chaseway. No, you can't. And then, you know, constantly looking at, okay, yes, they're doing the, the work, it's moving forward appropriately. So just so the board understands that will definitely be a busy couple of, of weeks for that. All right, sounds good. But that doesn't have to be talked. Yeah, I get nothing to do, I'll be glad to sit there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> off season will be over. Yeah, yeah like Thanks, man. No, you're right. Just to, to understand the, the little things that come up as a major project like that goes in, because they're going to be access to everyone in the building. They're going to be you know, replacing all the heat detectors on the you know, upstairs. They're going to be running the wire places. If there's deficiencies right now, there's not smoke detectors in the hallway out here right now. Mm -hmm. Those are going to need to be run. So it'll be a constant. Mm -hmm. 
I did find the um, job description or um, the description of responsibilities that Karen put together. I'll be sure to pull it too. Great. Um, and it, and it, I kind of see it can change because um, some of these things, and I already had a conversation, and I think we're still waiting on a proposal from the Gagnon about maintaining a heating system. I was going to call them today. Yeah. Um, and then the, the other project is the generator, the top of generator. Um, I had a conversation with John. He's got a couple of um, uh, proposals that he's kind of put together. And I spoke to more in area electric. Um, so I think it's really just kind of planning for oversight on the project. So, um, I mean, I think those are probably the most important things. And then just generally building like, evaluations. We'll, we'll try to do a better job. Maybe we can work together and put together uh, a plan that makes sense. Does that sound good? Yep. Yeah. Because, so, uh, too bad you didn't play. That's all we got. Um, so, I think it was been a couple weeks since they said Mike was supposed to have that to us. Um, I need to call him. Okay. So Unless Sean wants to do it. I can do it though. I, 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 I can call Mike and, and follow up. I know he gave me all of the numbers. So I, I know that. He gave I, you the, the proposed contract, right? Not the actual contract. He, gave, he walked through all of the different, you know, it's 350 for this piece. It's, you know, and he was writing that all up and, and then also what the town would get. So, um, you know, originally, so it's, it's almost like a warranty, right? With the exception that as part of that warranty, your yearly cleaning is included in it. So, you know, the, the benefit that the town gets, even if nothing breaks, is, is they can all, they service all of the equipment, they make sure that you know, it's working at peak performance, and then you know, if something breaks, they fix it. There are components that are not included in that, so it's not, uh, if the entire furnace blows up, it's replaced, it's the individual components, if they break, those are covered under that service plan. But, you know, if the furnace, you know, with the exception of everything's new right now, not the warranty, except highway, it's more of a, you know, this igniter goes, this, the small pieces, general maintenance. Is that being, the highway plan being involved with this particular yes. proposal? Um, well, they, they included your equipment. They did. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, we're having a clean tomorrow because we it hasn't been scheduled. You know, we had a schedule that they're going to do it tomorrow. But that that ain't going to affect the proposal. They'll know what's what the machine is looking like. You know, it's all about that clean. That would suit. It's a service contract for our heating systems, um, okay. not just town halls. Uh, they're going to have to clean it to get to know it anyway, so they'll have it already cleaned by that point. They yeah, actually. I think we should break that up. Though. When we, we went in last year. We went swap the uh, propane tank yeah. they went in and recorded all of the information on it. It, 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 all needs, it needs done. to be I want it serviced though. Yeah. Everything should be serviced once a year. So they're doing that to myself. The, the one that they were not going to include is the one in the the, the two up in the shacks. Right. And that's understandable that it's, it's a throwaway here. Um, so we're going to come, I made a note to send him what we have so far. Um, I'll also talk. I, I'll make a note to send him what we have so far. And then perhaps in the next meeting we can talk about what makes sense and what we're willing to do and anything. Do you have any suggestions in the end from Senator Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So there's an issue. Next subject coming up is going to be. Um, so we received an email to forward it um, regarding um, uh, the 11th, right? Um, so they have availability on the 11th for um, Mike Magnin and I'm going to come in and be with us. Okay. And that's going to be 12. Oh, actually, the 11th is a holiday, 12. which is another problem. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll see if we can do the 12th. Do we want to move um, the select board meeting to Tuesday since Monday is a holiday? I'm okay with that. If, as long as the, the calendar is free, I need two months to yeah. the calendar free. I don't think I'm pretty sure I don't know. Okay. Okay.
October. Uh, it is free. So October 12th. You know, but I'll see if we can schedule it for the 12th. Okay. I think you said going back my memory. I think that email was here this whole week. That whole week. That whole week. Good. Yeah. Um, so that that's to um, evaluate the weekend for some different town administrative services um, and also uh, participate in the recruiting process. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I just want to know that you know, we've gotten some feedback. Um, we understand that town residents could be suffering a little bit of town administrative be able to have daily conversations with. So it's going to, it is going to be addressed. And it's, it's it's not like the decision's going to be uh, It's going to be a void for. What do we do? Chuck has to next. What do we do when Chuck's on the day? Well, that's, I already asked the question about um, GAP, and the only uh, GAP you mentioned, which I'm willing to sign up for since I have some background in it, is welfare. Okay. Um, so somebody needs to take the phone for welfare, emergency welfare. Calls? Uh -huh. oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what other GAPs do we have? You didn't have any it. other GAPs. Um, I think I included your email, you know, but I'll just um, Okay. Oh, no, you did. I saw you Um, so he said payroll was all handled, and um, his only real concern was <laughs> um, so he said everything was covered. The only concern he had was that we had coverage for welfare emergencies. Okay. I'm going to reach out to I'm going to reach out to you. And um, I can't place it that, but I'm going to need to take the phone. Well, you got experience too, right? So. Uh, um, when I get Chuck called on, I'll see just anything else. Yeah, see if this. Be sure that you know you got welfare. Kevin's gonna take it, but if there's anything else that you think you may be missing on the hands, we can follow up with. Um, he didn't. He didn't say that. Um, who were you with? He was in there. I think that was the only gap. Oh, he's gone. Okay. Um, so we agreed to meet the meeting to October 12. Oh, I need to give him meeting dates for that week. Um, for the end of the week. Okay. Um, I think that's the only one we're gonna need. He's gone. So he's going to make sure the calendar's up to date um, by the end of this week. Okay. Right. And we've covered a few options right now. All right. So, right. The only issue I have um, is if there's an issue during the day. Um, well, there, there's a phone, so there's Voice a phone. Um, this is a cell phone that you have to take. I don't know if you can redirect all calls to that. Yeah. That's what the only what, the limitation I have is I do work with them, so it would have to be, you know, if I have to come in and do some other one, yeah, that's So, that being said, we take the work. I can try to listen. I'll commit that the only thing is I don't know much. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I can listen. I can get paid for it. Right. You take an application. Yeah. Um, I think that the real only, the big concern is obviously electricity disconnects, which this time of year isn't as critical. Um, and um, of course, um, yeah. yeah. displaced people. If he has anything that he wants to talk to me about, I have to call him. And we also have community action as, an, um, as a resource, so if, you know, we can always direct them to them. Because a lot of times they can take like, a lot of those things around. But um, I'll, I'll put together an email. Um, we'll get the chat people to get an email contact information.
All right, so now we're going to come up for the phone budget stuff. Yes. Um, so. So, um, I had kind of recommended since Highway and SIP are um, scheduled to be presented this week as a minimum, um, we should get, try to get through that first. Um, okay. And I you know in the past, um, we haven't always, the budget committee hasn't always had a very, very final budget um, during presentations, but sometimes it's kind of grabs. Um, so we may have to do that, but I think we we'll get through as much as we can. So we have, we'll have George Malcolm on the first. Uh, Thank you. Uh, So this is, Sean, this is the town hall um, security system. The longer one is the yeah. town hall security system. I also emailed it to you, and I gave you a hard copy so you have both. Okay. So I emailed it to the select board app. Okay. Okay. I oh, will transfer. Oh, we want to say that. That's the um, town Where'd hall um, fire alarm that we need to use some. Yep. Um, Sean also gave us the proposal for the and did you send us an email? Sorry. Yes, oh, yep, okay. to the Slack board now. Okay. Um, for the security system. And this is security only, not even phone for town hall. And burns. Yep. But he sent it to our email as well. We don't need to make decisions. Okay? Are we ready to see what We don't. It's not on the town hall security. Is that the only one we have a proposal? Um, we had one from Accutown, so it was phone and security. Um, it's old. I think we, just, we got it when um, Dr. John was yep. um, the chief and he worked with them on that. I actually have the hard copy at home that um, John gave me that we can look at. We didn't call Accutown back in um, for an update proposal, and probably should, because we really don't have enough background on the phone. We have some discussion about the phones. Um, so, for 
repairs and maintenance transfer safety. Um, no. Did you see it? Um, oh, I sent it to you guys. I did send it to you guys, yeah. <coughs> so um, you had $3,000 last year, but there's nothing this year actually that's been negated. Um, so yeah, the line's gone, huh? No, it's still there. Yeah, not yeah, line 93? 93? 93. It's under the general budget. So right. you're right. Yeah, oh, under the general budget, right. Yeah. Bill is making screen for sure. Oh, okay. I don't see what others in there are, actually. I think that's one that yeah. Caroline and Bill did. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Y
Um, so, let's see, other things. Um, the transfer station. Um, so, one of the things that um, that you had requested was some salary increases for the transfer station attendants. And I know you provided some um, local market data mm -hmm. on that. Um, I, I mean, I agree um, that, what are they, $13 an hour, roughly? Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so I also talked to the town of South Berwick and the town of Berwick to find out what the other names. Berwick is 14, South Berwick is 18. Um, they're both larger communities, but um, there's quite a variation there. Um, I think, and then, and then, did you guys get a chance to look at the market data? I did, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. What I want to say is the payroll. So, I mean, I agree. I'm going to support. I mean, I can't speak for these two, but I'd like to support your raises for sure. Yeah. The two there. And that survey I did was done last year. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know it's going. Yeah. I mean, so, I know. I don't mean they're 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 This is a stat. I think McDonald's is like sixteen, seventeen dollars or something like that. Yeah. So. Um, well, I hate to say no offense, but when the secretary is making and we're not dealing with people's cash. Well, in some ways, you are, yes, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, I think because we have some wage data, mm -hmm. um, I'm not adverse to it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that to go from 13 to 16 is pretty significant. Um, I think we need to find somewhere to meet in the middle on that. Uh, can I? Sure. I would like to see the guys over there at the lowest pay at the highway line. The least, at the least the lowest pay at the highway line. Because those guys work both ways. How much is it? Well, right now it's 14 something, which is not, you know. But I'm saying if we bring the highway department pay up, like we talk to pay, you know, have a schedule of what the pay should be, with what they do. I think we use guys from the transfer station work with us, and they're juggling pays from one section to another section when they're doing these jobs. That, that pay should not change. That pay should be one cell. So you're proposing, like, so Gary's working for you, for example, which I think I saw him out on Chrome. Gary yeah, works with us quite a bit. Right. That he should have the same hourly rate whether he's working for you or working for him. I, I agree. That would make it simpler, I'm sure. Well, um, that might make it smaller. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's crazy to have these guys, oh, we're making 13 bucks, but I'm going to work at the highway department today. That's you know, cool. that, that's exactly right. Um, do you have job descriptions? Hey. Yes. Okay. Um, I saw the equipment labor one. We talked about that. Yeah, I think I'd given them to you when you came in. Okay. But I can easily send them again. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and that's my thoughts. I mean, and I believe he's on the same page. Oh, yeah, no, I think that's... Yeah, yeah I don't think the, the, Because yeah. they, you know, they, plow, they come in to plow before opening at the transfer station, so they're doing literally what we do. You know, they come out and help us out, clean up, and they'll haul snow for us when we're hauling snow. You know, we're using these people for multi-functions. To have them pay one about salary here and another salary oh, there. Actually, you're right. They can make that thing. Where do I want to work? Yeah. You know, I mean, they don't necessarily have the option of where they want to work. They're hired <laughs> you know, as transfer. But if we need someone, I think it's someone that's already on the books. Thank you, right? So, Your phone trouble data is turned off, so I can't help you with that. Oh, moment. good God. Um, I think we need to look at a bigger picture. Like, the the volume is awful. The volume is awful. The volume is awful. The volume is awful. The so what do you what do you propose in this? What do you well, propose? I propose. Uh, okay. Yeah, that information we I don't. But, uh, but I've got Gary. I've got my lowest paid guy over there at fifteen fifty. I think that's what the staff is going to be at the, the lowest. 
The number is really close. Um, only send dumpsters off to be dumped when they're totally full. Yeah. And if you we guys pay really, the same amount, really great job. if we pay the same amount, uh, twenty what is it, two twenty-five to have them dumped, have them haul, whether they're empty or full. So I'm not going to send one out that's half full unless mm -hmm. I'm trying to anticipate something. But you know, so it's we watch that really close. Try to get them packed as much as we can. We go with the backhoe, pound them down, make sure they're stuck. So. Um, so, actually, mind what the doctor was saying on the, re the wages? Because um, mm -hmm. you outlined the, the movement of each person, right? Yes. So the average he came up with of that um, data was 15.25. And then, um, so we proposed. 16. My lowest, um, my lowest was 15.50. Yes. So it'll be two at 15.50 and one at 16.50. And that's because of seniority. So Paul Ames? Yes. Um, he's proposing moving from 13.75 to 16.50 an hour. He works 20 hours a week. He does all the compact, does all the plastic compacting, yeah. all the ba all the uh, aluminum bailing. So he does all that. And that's done on time when we're not open. Let's say for that way around the machine. Um, so for Paul Martel, he's proposing that he can do thirteen dollars an hour, fifteen fifty, and that's for seventeen hours a week. Gary Karen from thirteen hours, yeah, thirteen dollars to fifteen fifty an hour for seventeen. Hours. And then a new person um, starting at 1550 for six hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Times have changed. Yeah, so again, I, won't, I know. Not for me. And that gets us no, back. I'm just going to get screwed. People wise. I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm just going to be my opinion right now. I think the wages, is, it, it's a fairly good raise, but I don't think. It's a fairly good raise, but I think about 15 on the page anyway. Obviously, so I'm, I'm okay with that. And I, what I'd like to see is some of it offset with highway if you guys can. Some of them. I'm not saying all of them. I'm going to be something like that. Mm -hmm. So the proposed impact of that, though, is an additional $18,570 yep. in so the budget. Yeah, so I'd, I'd like to see maybe <laughs> somehow we can use it like that. Here's a budget. But, but we still got to go to yard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I'm this thing is. I don't know if you can it for. So, yeah. Um, As, as far as the transfer station, um, okay. So, um, so for this, um, no good. Continue. No, I'm just thinking. So, 
Um, so Paul is kind of the lead guy, right? Paul, you Well, if I need a long it's probably oh, so. Yeah. And uh, you know, we've always jumped in and come in bail whenever, you know. Yeah. He run, you know, he runs the bail, he take care of all the bailing and stuff like that, make sure that everything's sorted right and all, you know. So, yeah. I'm not saying the other guy's eating is good, but, you know, they, they all have their functions. He's taken a little liking to doing that. They don't even have to worry about yeah. telling him, hey, that's getting fully to the door. He just does it. He, he watches it and does it. So. He left what would have cost you Well, at least that. In today's world? Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to be getting anything. Yeah. Well, you get somebody. Yeah, you get somebody. Yeah. 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 Um, the, the only thing I have, one issue that would probably change is the new person. Um, I might start them at 15, just yeah. because they yeah, don't have that's any acceptable. experience. Yep. Um, and yeah. then the, the other things I want to um, request is that we make sure, before we sign off on these, mm -hmm. we have job descriptions. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to make it even harder for you guys. A very big, basic performance review of them. Okay. You know? um, and so you probably, since you are selecting in another panel, you probably have seen some, you might model it after. Right. I'll put my hands on a copy. Okay. Great. Okay. So I'm okay with it. Kind of those, kind of those low conditions, but those. Yeah. So I, I think that's very good. Okay. I, I think someone they shouldn't come in at the starting pay anyway. A new person. I True. think they should be a, a yes, I period of yeah. you know. Yeah, you should have at least six month trial. Yeah. Yeah, probationary period. Probation period. Right. I mean then. I have a like when I was being paid on paid up right and the new guy off the street and didn't make the same kind of money as me doing less work. So um, so you, you guys have until the end of the year um, to come up with your job description and stuff? So you get some time. Yeah. I'm working on mine, you got three yes, or four of mine already. I did, yeah. yeah. I think I've actually got it's either three or four job descriptions and it breaks down to what the guys do. You know, you might be able to help him. No, he does work every day. No, I mean, from that point, if, I mean, if, if you come from that background, yeah. and you can get access to stuff like that. He's helped get... me, Jack, right along. He's been my right hand man. Well, you can probably set that up. Yeah. Um, so do we want to make a motion? I can, I can say a motion if you want. Yeah. Um, okay. um, so I'll make a motion to accept um, the proposed salary increases for the transfer station, um, with the exception, and we'll put this in the minutes on it, um, so you have it on there too. Okay. Um, with the exception that the Saturday person will start at $15 an hour, and um, this is continued on um, the department's providing job description and a, and a basic performance review. Um, by the time we make the salary change. And what is it? I mean, the salary change is it, um, I'm trying to find out how it was. Physically or is it the first change? Right? It's, so in March. You start in January. Yeah, so first oh, it is you first vote time. in March. Yeah. Yeah. Right right we get ready. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Do we have a second? Second. All there. Aye, aye. aye. Alright, good, thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay, so that's, I, think, I think that was the only other thing. Everything else online, I think, was, I didn't have any other information. No, it's going back more you want to make it straightforward. Okay, so, um, since, so I, I, I'm the keeper of the budget of Fortsheet now. I'll make, uh, we're going to do the math and make the adjustment um, to the proposed budget before Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Or by Wednesday. Does the budget, does the budget mean anything? Yes. Um, well, I propose one. Okay, that's what I, I want to make sure. One night, because it's a split right between two things. Well, they so cover three things. Yeah, they're supposed to do transfer, high rate, and sit on Wednesday, right. but they can't make it. We, which they can, we can still go over it, um, which is if there were any questions you wouldn't be there for. Right. Right, they want to send me the questions. If they want to go over it, that'd be great. Get it done, they can send me the questions. Um, Where I am a slugman in another town, Wednesday nights is my slugman. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and we didn't have one last week, so I'm going to be there. Well, we'll make sure that someone can cover the questions and the information we talked about tonight. Okay. That'd be wonderful. Okay. Yeah, why was I doing that? So that's so on, which, on the which knows everything on it, too, so. We need to have a clear on that. We need to clear that out. Okay. So. You were more so, so I feel like we should probably try to get through. Um, I wait. Why don't, we, why don't we try to do maybe like a hard stop um, on budgets by 8.30 mm -hmm. and then finish up with the board appointments? Okay. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Well, I think it does. Is that okay? Yes. And then we'll continue we'll tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Six. Five and that, that only assumes that? that, well, it assumes that we didn't get through all of this. Mm -hmm. Which we won't. There's a good possibility we won't. Um, if we don't, then we'll be able to repeat the Okay. Speaking of this, um, so we'll, we'll do no, it. No, no, I think it's wrong. All right, so we're good. So let's go to the highway. Um, so highway. And then 
put brick right in or grass or whatever, in stone or whatever. The healthy roads. Could we talk about the highway plan first? I mean, because that gives us the bigger, broader picture as we look at this. We haven't. I just want to know what our priorities are. That's I agree with you. Well, let's have an email. I don't know if I forwarded it to you, Jack. Um, but can you tell them what the road is? Oh, the next year? What the proposed roads that we're going to handle this year are. This coming year. I think we can find it. Jesse Dole is number, number one, should you done next year. That's the first one. I, my thoughts are. Then I was thinking of doing, because of the condition of it is between the mills, and I don't know what the situation is and who owns the roads down there. I believe it's the town road. It goes into the, to the water sewage treatment plant, but that is all broken up. And that's another thought we've got to, you know, it's going to be looked at. Because plowing and stuff, we're hitting the manholes, we're doing it, and the road's breaking up significantly in certain places. It's not a big road, it should be grounded and paid. That's why it's going to be What's that? What's the name? What's that? Where, where does it go? Mill Road? I don't know. Right down to the sewer. What is the name of the road between the mill? Lower Mill. Oh, mill call it lower mill. Oh, yeah, I know. Get the lower mill road. road. Yes. Yeah. Lower Mill Road. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we almost used a hundred thousand a mile. Right. That's that's is that, is that, is that, is that the no. hundred thousand a mile. That's pretty close. Pretty close that, to that. But that's overlay, that's not that's a reconstruction. Not right. Uh, wow. Sligo Road was a reconstruction. That was all ground, redone right from the base up. The Coulee's on top. How much is that? Yeah. Well, that was, was, that was three done over, years. That was done over three years? Three years. years. Done over two years. No, we did. How much per mile? The overlay was a third year. I don't know what that one was a mile. That was probably. What do we pay down there this year just to get the overlay done? 140? Yeah, we'll say 130. Yeah, so we probably got 240. You're not getting much. Yeah, you probably got close to 300 in that entire row. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we paid what? 111 on the wood ground. Yeah. In that development. Based yeah. on the overlay. Yeah. So, yeah. how much traffic do we get from the mill? That's the other, that's the other concern. Now, uh, we're getting, I'm getting calls from, uh, emails from the owner of the mill saying, you know, there's sections of that road that don't be good. The road's in very rough shape. It's, you know, however, the only traffic that we give them is the library and sewer sure, treatment. You know, the, the sewer sure treatment. So, as far as traffic count, you know, there's, there's no traffic yeah. count there. We get a section, I got a price in that section that's broke up uh, so before winter because it's going to wash the rest of the room. Uh, I didn't want to turn that in tonight until we might get the final bill for you know, so we can see what our plan goal is. If we get some extra money, I'll get a couple of payment projects that I want. I told you about that. Could you just patch that? Right, that's what I was wondering. Could we do a decent job patching it and allocate that money to a more highly traveled road? We could probably have them just do a shim coat over it. You know, when they're here to do Jesse Doe, just have them run a shim coat over that road and kind of, you know, get it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, I, I can have them. I want to know what you guys want before I go out and have them come and give us estimates. I mean, if it's a road that's not used for them. I highly agree with you. I mean, you've got to look at it and say, there's other priorities. I agree. So, part of the conversation I just want to so, like, uh, Doing back there, you just do it. I don't want to say a cheap and inexpensive, inexpensive pound type job. Aesthetics, it looks nice and it should hold up, but obviously, Jesse Doe, you're going to do the whole thing. Jesse Doe needs to be DMK. built because when Jesse Doe was built originally, they used the materials that was on the property. They didn't put no gravel over the base, and you know, they didn't build the roads like That's every it. other development. And, and, it's, got, and it's going to crumble. And it's crumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we could do it, you know, just have them go in there and shim that road, bring it back to, so it's passable by a few years, whatever the heck it is on that. I mean, it's not a lot of traffic. You know, they could probably put it in this and a half on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of digging it all up and doing it that way, I mean, you're going to have to adjust some of the handling because they're out of whack to the road. But yeah, but that, that, doesn't that make logical sense? Oh, I, I, I agree. I agree. But if it doesn't get traveled a lot, there's a lot more That's right. All you have is the library and... That could take, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of apartments there, but that should be up to the mill. And yeah, but they pack under the apartment building there, too. Right. right. Under the front street apartment, there's packing yep. underneath there, so. You know, I, I mean, there's not even a fine line of what, who owns where. That's, That's the problem there. Oh, there is. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know how close are the buildings you blind to. I don't know. So what how, do you, how do you do it, then? Certified. I just yeah, maintaining have maintaining in the center of the road that we plow it. <laughs> You have to survey them? Yeah. I don't know how, how they would come up to get the right back in. Go to deeds and, and yeah, and yeah, basically survey. You know? Yeah. Maybe you'll be a surprise that they own the buy the milk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's hey, should we have somebody look at that? I, think I would think that's probably not a bad idea. I don't know. So before we make that a priority, it's probably all upstairs in the plants. Oh. <clears throat> You know, I mean, they have to have an access road to the treatment plant, but, you know, who owns that access road? There's a treatment plant, there's a town. You know, it's probably something worth looking at. Because Could you put a list of questions together on that? I can. I mean, just as simple you know, as far as, should we have a survey or look at it? It may not be a bad idea, I mean, to find out exactly who owns the property. I mean, you could, there's no fine lines, I mean, other than they ran two lanes of pavement down the center. 
but all the garages, everything else attaches to it, the walkways. It's, yeah, it's was, hard was to tell. The, was the apartment buildings on Front Street built at the same time as the mills? Mm -hmm. And were so they connecting properties? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very good question. So it used to be prioritize the mill. No, we used to buy a part of the No, that's right. So I would take that off the priority list for now. That's right. I mean, as far as a major work, a road that needs major work, that is the number one road. But I mean, there is other roads. I mean, Starfield Circle is, you know, and Paris, there's all kinds of roads that need work. Starfield is like residential. Water used to plant. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's all. And that one there, I was talking with uh, Chris from Pike, the uh, salesman that treats us as a rocks now, he used to be white. Uh, and going to mill that instead of completely grinding it up but, so they don't have to change the curvings. They can build it they down can, to save it. You know, they they can save the curve they already have in the, the sidewalk. That's right. So and it's pretty curving along that. So if we ground it all up, then they'd have to replace all that, which we don't have to do. You can take a mill off an inch or two and put a new layer on the top and you can salvage it that way. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think we'll move forward for once they're in the highway budget? What would we propose on the same kind of Well, I have to let me know. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I asked you, what would you take out? Cold patch it. There's only 25 dollars to finish. Keep going. Take no, we we could take some out of our equipment fund. Okay. You know, well, equipment. We give us an update on tree maintenance because we haven't expended anything on it. Tree maintenance? Yeah. Oh, you can't. There's too many trees to cut. Oh, we haven't expended anything yet? Uh, we have the PO to spend it all. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Good. But they can't do it until the last week in December, the first week in January. So it's. Why is that? Try to get a tree company. I mean, I don't. I'm just asking. George, I've been waiting three months to get quotes for people. George, did you ever talk to Nick at all? Not yet on that. I, I'm, no, but we still have plenty of trees. Up. No, I'm sure. I'm going to talk on that one before. Nick is. Okay, okay. I'm scheduled. Who's going to be talking to? Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I've met. I, I use Urban Oak and Nick Smith and Weenie and stuff. Like, I called Burks, no response. I called a couple other tree companies with no response because they're so far out. Did you try DB Tree and so forth? DB Tree and so forth. Um, yeah, there a, a local company out of South Philip as well. No, I didn't know anything about it. Do we have an estimate? We have an estimate. Yes. Okay. We signed it to PO. But it's for the full amount. I mean, yeah, we have PO to do all the pre work that we do. So let's go through those items. So you take how much out of equipment? Much as I hate to take any out of it, I think we'd spend forty four hundred out of it. Well, yeah. fifty six hundred left. Oh, there's ten thousand. We have 10,000. I think if I'm looking at, uh, actually, there's 5,200 taken out of it. So, what is that for? Like equipment line, George? It's uh, with the hand tools and powder, you know, okay. and powder, powder, or whatever you need. Uh, so, it looks like we're. Street sweeping, we could probably cut a couple thousand out of it. I think it was $1,000 a sweep this year. So we're getting a new sweeper on us. I mean, not that I want to sweep. We can't sweep all the streets with that new drone we got, but we could eliminate some of them. Yeah. Some of them. Uh, so equipment looks like you're only about half expended there yeah. um, today. You're talking 159? Uh, 187. I'm oh, sorry, I can't say number 189. Vehicle repair and maintenance. Oh, so you say it's 20 grand. That one needs to go up. That that yeah, that, yeah. That's not that budget. Was, that budget was totally spent quick. before and the budget was even passed yeah. this past year. That's one that just and it's it's going to get a hit again as soon as I get my numbers for the, for the inspections. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you can take three out, three out of equipment and probably 15 out of sweeping. 
Some money we put away for highway for maintenance, but the main part of the town entirely then going forward should probably be so like for like maybe not for even twenty twenty two but twenty three on probably the best way should go. I think we really have to think about this about capital. I know I agree on so so let's do a review of that, but let's make this two seven. Okay. I'm I'm fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's gonna be presented for the budget on, on Wednesday, so that's what we'll present, two seventy five. Okay. And then Old passion, and it's only 2500 I So, what about that? Because you might want to do something in the winter. Right. Yeah. What about what street sweeping and um, what's the other one? Equipment. 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 Forty-five plus another. Jack, I'm not going to go there, but I've been here four years. Every year, my budget's gave back more like than it's finished here. That makes about twenty, I think. Um, Ninety-some white thousand last year went back from my budget. So equipment is five. And it's not going to get smaller. The unfortunate part about our budget, 
Doesn't it's always right. spending. It's never taking in. I know. Okay. So, um, so I'll make a motion that we modify the uh, highway budget um, to uh, change the road resurfacing and maintenance um, appropriation to two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Modify, modify the street sweeping line item to reflect fifteen hundred dollars and modify the equipment line to reflect five thousand dollars. Yeah, it's equipment line numbers. So I'm just, I can tell you the line items. So it's important. Um, so road resurfacing is line 199. Okay. Oh, take, three, take three out. Take three out. Okay. So that leaves you at seven. I know it's hard to follow right now, so. Do you want me to go line by line? Sorry. Okay. You better. Okay. Um, so um, motion to modify line 199 to $275,000 for road maintenance and resurfacing. Modify line 195 street sweeping to $1,500. Modify equipment line 187 to $7,000. Um, all right, on to salary storage. Um, um, so, I can make it very easy for you. Change my pay to hourly and set an hourly rate. You can be paid to me, you be paid to you guys. So, I'll say what I always say the issue I have. <laughs> is obviously um, job descriptions, performance reviews, and marketing. Do you have any marks supporting marketing? I because talk where, to, where the numbers come from. We need I talked to a few guys in business. My salary is about $25 an hour right now, the way I figure it. Most of the guys that do my job are not considered road agents. They're, they're working for me, which is basically what I do. I'm making $30 plus dollars an hour. So, that's talking about several guys in the area, and they're paid hourly. So they get overtime for the hours they're here in excess of the, uh, their salary. So that's, yes, it's a significant increase if you're looking at it that way. However, uh, or I'll give you 50 hours at my salary, and you guys pay me overtime after 50 when it comes in the winter time when we're working the crazy hours. But then, how are you going to justify that? I mean, how are you going to, you know, know when that's going to happen? So I think the hard part for me is that we're looking at $18,000 in salary increases with no data to go on. Um, that, that's a hard part for me. Um, you know, Ed was kind enough to do a little bit of research and make phone calls and stuff like that. And we have a little bit of market data there. Um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you right now with the truck drivers out being paid in the area. We all, there's not a truck driver in the area making point, less than 20 bucks an hour. When you put an equipment operator on top of that, you're adding a few dollars an hour. So, I mean, if you're looking at, you know, some of the data, that's... We did raise one, one position up to 18 recently, and we're going to leave that one alone. I mean, but... You know, if we get guys that the plow drivers that come in and work for us and get $20 an hour, because that's all they do is plow. So, um, I'm going to ask a hard question. Do you know what each person is making an hour? Do I know what each person is now? Uh, not exactly. Okay. How many people do you know? Two men. So, you and two other people? Me and Ed's the only people that just call me. Here's the one that they will do. That's the highway stop? So we're going to do a high stop at 830. Yep. So we're not going to be able to take everybody. Probably not. So we want to. Um, I hate to have fights. I know. Wait. Okay. Are you guys available tomorrow? Okay. I'm not. All right. We'll stick around. Then. Yeah, we can go a little bit. That's fine. So can I come back tomorrow night? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Sorry. Nice Sorry. Seven That's eight. okay. I'm taking in your questions and I'm going to go do some right, research. Cool. Okay, great. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you. So, um, so can I, can we say that? 
Mike's not active. Oh. That came from uh, Carolyn. Okay. So you have Mike spinning? Yeah, that mm -hmm. lights need to be adjusted on that one. Yeah. Where exactly that? So there's Mike Dione. Mike Dione and Mike Dione, Jim Truman are part time power drivers. The only two. Yeah. And that's part time power driver. That's all they can do. Um, so we have a job description for Mike Spinning. Right? Correct. Do you have any other job description? And I, I thought I gave you one for labor. Labor. Work. That's the labor and the equipment operator. Yeah. I broke it down in four different ways. I think I, I thought I sent you. I'm not exactly sure. All right. And we're going to find that and resend that out to you folks if you want. I don't know whether you have it in your emails anywhere. So, just um, from my perspective, it's hard for me to make an $18,000 commitment without any market data. But I think we need to find a compromise um, to kind of move them towards, um, you know, what we think is probably market salaries. Um, do you guys have any thoughts about that? Like, I think that, well, the only one that's going to move would be his position. And each transfer station manager, truck driver. If I can add in, in act, and we're, we're losing our Superintendent of the Transfer Station. We're looking to pay between $22 and $23 an hour to replace him, but we also are making it a uh, like a facility manager too. So the person that's going to be responsible for fixing pat patches and holes in the walls, and you know, uh, not so much lawn maintenance, but you know, he's all, he's going to be the one taking care of the building. So, so that's going to be between $22 and $23 an hour. We're looking to fill that fairly soon. Um, so that's the only market that uh, If you adjusted the other guys from it, like Gary, it's already adjusted if this goes through. Uh, so that won't change on Gary, but um so so I think what I'd like to propose, um, and it's, it's not gonna, <laughs> it, it's, I'm just going to throw this out, because I have half. Um, half no, no I, I, I don't know how to do it. Like, we don't know what people are paid. Um, so I'm, I'd like to propose that we do an increase um, to the line and um, get market data. So between now, well, we have to get market data. We need to know what the wages are. Well, no, it can't be too much. Right. Um, but we, put, we do an increase to the line. Um, we plan to get market data. And we also plan to make sure every job is described. And again, the basic performance rules. So, what do you feel is, I feel we should pick a percentage of the increase on that line. No, it's going to be 50. 50%? Um, so we can what we can do is we can budget a certain percentage, mm -hmm. but the but the So we have another sweep at this after tomorrow, right? We do. Yes, sure. I didn't have people just um, say, yes, sorry. No, it's okay. Right. So we should, we should budget a percentage of, on that line of increase with the expectation is we're going to get market data and then make adjustments once we have more data. Yeah. So what percentage do you want to go up as the budget data? Um, so let's see. So, so right now, um, we're talking. They're, so they're saying, George, your your percentage is a 12 percent increase. The full time staff is a 13 percent increase, and the highway and part time staff is a 23 percent increase. Um, that was that was to get the hours because we had more use of four hours to use. So I, I don't know how you guys want to do that. That I'd like to get somebody with more hours on the. Uh, you know, with the staffing. So when we use, if we use these guys every day of the week, we don't have that. 
and that ability to that budget will not hold up if we, you know, I think help all the time with us. Or we can So are you looking to propose more full time people? Well, I, 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 that was my proposal originally to get one more full time person and then have a, uh, one part time person. But, you know, it, it, there's so many variables with, uh, yeah, because Ed, you know, we're doing the transfer station work and stuff like that. And, you know, it's. I don't know how, to, how you guys want to do it. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a hard ask um, mm -hmm. to ask the taxpayers to consider. 12 and 13% increases? No, I agree. Um, well, so you're looking at a percentage of the, just a raised percentage of what we should be doing, right? Instead of 12%, you're looking at like a 4% so, or 3%. Right. Um, well, and if that, assumes that the you know, we collect market data and we're moving towards market increases in that, in that percentage. And it's not just the cost of living, um, but we actually evaluate where we are and how we compare with other towns. So if we, we propose, say, a 5% increase across the board, and then to market data, if that's not going to be functional, are we talking about from now and the seven budget? Um, so, so if we said, for example, a 5% increase in those funds, yeah. between now and the time um, races can be distributed, we have market data, and then we decide. Good. Is it five percent or okay. is it really two percent that needs to bring people to the market? Yep, I got you. you know? um, but at least we need to take a step forward. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to think about the town as well as the state. So. True. The answer is if you get us market data sooner, it helps to be better. So John Urasovich got a statewide um, salary. Um, I think I should share it with It's in the police. Yes, I know, that's right. Um, and it's the whole state told to sergeant everything. Um, so that was really useful for us to try to decide what made sense. I don't know if the state has that, but it might be worth a phone call. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think. So do we want to put a line up? Do we want to do that tonight and, and just give them a number and then it's going to be a little bit fictional until we actually do it, until it's finalized? Well, actually, we shouldn't do it because it's going to go to budget on Wednesday. They don't lock it out anyway. Really, it's whatever. I mean, they have to take this local like, recommendation. Um, they will hear the, the, the recommendation of the highway, but, um, but really, it's a select like, recommendation that governs what they should be considering. Um, so I would say we pick, um, I think I would be okay with, with 5%. That's what I said. And I know you're looking for 12 and 13. And I was going to normally raise, I, I mean, because of the circumstances and stuff, normally I two of you are raising it most of the years ago. But since the situation is only say five, <coughs> and they look at it, at least they have five. And it could be lower. If you come back and market data doesn't show 5%, I mean, it could be lower. I don't think it will, but you know right. I mean? right. So we're, we're going to move forward with that. We're hoping we'll make it. Um, definitely. I, I, I don't want to, as long as we can adjust it afterwards, once we get the data. Okay. Okay, so do we want to, but do we also, so the question is, do we really do we want to make this 5%, potential 5% market adjustment from one year? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. I think so. I mean, it's a little bit, I know it's a high percentage for pay, but I still believe that. I'll make the motion to make a motion. Okay. I'm going to make a motion to adjust line 177 uh, road agent um, to 5%. And I'll, I'll get the numbers that form numbers together. Okay. Um, and a motion to modify line 178 full time staff to 5% increase. Okay. And line 179 um, to a 5% increase. Um, with the contingency that we get market data and we make adjustments based on that market data up to 5%. Um, we also have job descriptions and a basic performance review. Okay. 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 Okay
It's been, uh, it's been discussed with you all about job descriptions and in action reviews and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it's, I, it mentioned, be, I mentioned in the past that they should be job descriptions. You get the best guy in the world to help you. <laughs> right? Okay. You're right there. All right, yeah. But, you know, I mean, no one wanted to hear us about that stuff before. You know, it's just mm -hmm. the way it was. Well, I, and I think really what we're asking you is even just put a, a Word document together of what your guys do. And then for you to put together a list of what you do, and then we'll refine it from there and work with you on describing your job as well. That makes yeah, sense? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Great. Great. I think, I think, we're good. I think that's yeah. it for Highway. Uh -huh. Oh, we have the fire? Yep. Thanks, guys. Yeah, uh, unless you've got anything else for us. Thank you. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, okay. I will ask um, up here. Sure. And I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you this again. I know you hear a lot, but you, you guys, you guys up here are always very professional and do a good job. So, Thank you. I'm sure you don't need to say that. I've had it. Oh, it's good to hear. I've passed it on to them. Good. They appreciate it. So. They are great. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Right. So, well, <laughs> We're going to go ahead and turn it back. Well, hang out. What's going to be done? Hey, you guys are hiring. Okay. Five times what we do. Oh, really? Yeah, it'll be done in an hour. Yeah. 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 I wanted to take a look at the drive. Okay. Because he's got okay. to go. Okay. 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 Fire. Um, um, so, Sean, thank you for putting together your PowerPoint. Um, that was very really helpful. Um, I, so, I updated it for tonight, so um, I know we don't have it oh, present, okay. but I can just walk through the, the verbal part of that. Um, we could actually, if you wanted to hook up, you could what makes it called. Um, well, you want to put it up on It's up to you, I can just I'd like to see it. Okay. You know, I, well, you can look good. Visuals are much better. I, I cool. Oh. Much better. Can you move it over? I'll just move it over. No, it's cool. Alright, because we're right now. All right, 
we won't be able to do this for ten so the first question that you asked was, was around health volume. Yeah. So for the last three years, including this year, we're seeing about 20, 22 calls additional per year. The thing to understand about calls is, is that it can be an hour. It can be an hour, it can be two days. You never know when the tone is going on, how long we're going to be there. Is there an average? Most of the calls are two to four hours. Um, even a simple medical aid, the members may only be there an hour. Mm -hmm. By the time you go help the ambulance, build the patient, take them to the, you know, we get back to the fire station. But by the time we do reports, follow up with anything, you know, we've had issues in town where we've done, you know, we've had to contact the state for elder abuse or, different issues, OSHA coming out the other day. You know, the fire part of that scene, probably done in 15 minutes. We had the tear spread, guy was fine. We were on scene another four hours. And then since there, I've sent another probably five hours following up with a report for OSHA, going back, helping OSHA measure, and you know, going over everything doing all of that additional stuff. So, you know. So on an average call, how many people go on? It's usually six to eight. Six to eight? It's usually one to two. Depending on the time of day. Yeah. I'll never get six or eight people in the daytime. Yeah. Everybody in the fire station is a full time job. Every day. So when we get a call, yeah. basically we're asking them to leave whatever you're doing. Yeah. Some people can't leave their job. I can. Sean does. I have another guy that works with me, but I may be working 10 or 15 minutes away, but I make sure that I go. So Same. daytime coverage, we, he went, we went with one person, and I called the other day. And by NFPA standard, that's a violation of the standard because you're not supposed to be in a fire truck with less than three people. So how do you decide how many people should be on a call? How do I decide? Mm -hmm. I fill a fire truck up and send as many as I can get. I don't decide per call or what the call is. I, did, I decided based on how many show up. I agree based on how many show up so I can make it a functional engine company. Is this so a medical aid call? It's only medical aid, you only need yeah. two people? No. I may need five, and I may call for more. You don't know until you get there, until you can analyze it and size it up how many people you have. So I don't make that decision at the fire station before we get on the fire truck. I put as many people as I can in service to get there. Once you get there, eyeball it, size it up, then you can make a determination on what you need. But you always come with more than you need because you don't want to get caught behind the eight ball not having enough. So when you do that, so for example, one incident from last year, um, which was kind of controversial, is the battery change. How many people do you send out for something like that? Battery change. And the smoke detector. Some woman called oh. the fire department. Oh. So you how know, many and that, that, we didn't send anybody out. We did that on our own time. Nobody was. Um, who was on Facebook? All yeah, the were on nobody Facebook. was. Yeah, because she wanted to take pictures. She was so grateful. She yeah. called the fire station, yeah. left us a message. There was some guys at the station that after a call. We were all done. We went up there on our own time. The only thing we did <coughs> is we used the fire department equipment right. because we needed some of that there. But we did it on our own time. But how do you just make that determination then? How do you know to send out six people to change batteries? Those guys wanted to go. I could have done it with two or three. She gave us the information. She says, I need a step I need this, and I need that, I need this. I'm not going to put it. I'm going to be the liaison and get some public report on it. I know it hit the Facebook, and it just went crazy for absolutely zero reason. But again, that's a whole bunch of folks making a determination that they know nothing about. But none of that. Sean was there, I was there, and a couple, a couple three other guys were there. That was their call. The other thing to understand is the public service. Us going out and helping change batteries means that we didn't have a 2 a.m. call with their fire alarm system going off and everybody racing to the, to the station actually doing it. That we get two or three calls a month for you know, faulty detectors. It's much safer for us to do it after a call, much better for the town and to have us racing there because the smoke detector is going off. Because at that point, we don't know if it's going off because it's a faulty detector or because there's something, there's carbon dioxide in the air, there's smoke in the air. 
whatever, it's a much safer for us to do that during the day yeah. than to come back at night. So from a town standpoint, it's almost better that we did it then than waiting for those detectives went off in the middle of the night. Well, I think the problem is, is the precedent that it sets as well. Like, where do you say no? Do we have hundreds of people calling to change batteries? Like, so that's a whole other discussion. Mm -hmm. But that's the concern, is there's a precedent there. And my point in saying it was, you know, like, I feel like that you have to make some judgment on the situation, on how many people you need to keep there for three or four or five hours at a time. And you don't think I do that? I don't know. Because I do. Okay. That's, that's, that's so I don't leave them sitting around the fire station. All is done, they go home. The ones that stay and do it are the officers and the people that need to make sure that all the reports and stuff are taken care of. Because half of our reports involve another agency or it goes into legal issues and whatnot. So all that has to be done by the officer that's in charge. And out of that, usually check by myself or Sean before it's clear. And then we go to the next one. So, Mark, if you have only have two or three people there, do you have access to other police departments? I mean, I'm fire departments. I'm sure they are mutually existing. We live by it. Every fire department does, especially us because we are so understaffed. And I never know who's coming. Big difference between us and most fire departments. I mean, you understand what we are. We're, yeah. we're a call fire department. Yeah. So everybody's got to give up what they're doing to show up. Right. The big advantage to every other fire department in the area, and I do mean everyone except us, they know, they already have people there. They know what's happening. I don't know. With our new system in here with the am responding, I at least have guys now that all have that software. So they can put in that they're responding. It's okay, I know I got one guy, two guys, if there's a driver, that's good. I got an engine company. And it also give you an idea of when they arrived. But we're still not meeting the standard of which we need to meet the fire truck on the road at the right time. And we're doing the best we can. As soon as I get three guys, we take off from the fire truck. There's been times when he went by himself. I've gone by myself. Somebody's got to get there and start taking control. Make some decisions. But I'll show up with the three that I want. But seven out of ten times, I need more of those three. So another truck comes, or a backup piece of equipment comes. Because the other thing that we're finding an awful lot that we're doing lately is the fact that the police department has been so understaffed. And you might have to understand that there are not enough officers. We're doing half of their job. If it comes to a traffic, a traffic accident, we're helping with measurements, we're doing lighting, we're doing traffic control. That's all stuff that falls under their ground. But they don't have the people to do it. So we're taking over half of that role for them so they can perform what they do. So the night that woman got killed by, they got run over here by his cover of arms. Mm -hmm. Oh, eight hours involved into that by the time we were finished. The police left the scene. We controlled that scene for quite a while until the EME and whatnot, the investigators could be there, because they didn't have enough staff. That fell over on the fire department staff. It's not fire department anymore. Okay, we're done. I'm going to wrap it up and go home. No, we have to stay there as long as we need to solve the problem and make sure everything's under control. So, my question is where there's such an issue with the reliability of staff, does it make sense to start considering partial regionalization, re you know, to supplement the fire department? That's, that's been done numerous, numerous times by a lot bigger fire departments than us. And it never gets off the ground. It becomes. Have we done any research? On yes, there has been there have been a lot of recent studies to try to do regionalization. Tri City, Tri City, I can find you something that hasn't happened in a few years. But they've tried that a whole bunch of times. But even the regionalization thing, the biggest problem with it is in a town like this, if we want a regional, everybody would be helping us on every single time. But we're surrounded by cities with a lot more right, than we have. Right, but those taxpayers are augmenting us time and time and time again. Those taxpayers ain't going to do that for very long. They're going to say, oh, there would be a cost. Oh, yeah, there would be a big cost. A big cost, but we don't really have the data on that. That's a whole other subject. Oh, that's a whole bigger subject. Okay. The bang you get for your fire department right now is, is unbelievable. Yeah, what you guys get for down. what we provide. Right. Don't take more. Do it with a long term. And At least probably more than that. Average fire for the data. Like you want data? Average fire for the data. data. We have before, and you know, it's probably three or five years old, but we have gone down now for before. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to go back just to a quick question. When someone's, maybe I'm missing something, when someone's fire alarm goes off and there's a faulty battery, someone calls the fire department and they call Well, yeah, they can. Or they will call the dispatch. The dispatch sends us out. They may not know. They don't call the fire department because 
if it's two in the morning, they're going to get answers. There's nobody there. There's never anybody there that they think. Don't you go through double dispatch, though? What's that? Yeah, don't don't See, go through double dispatch. So they yeah. dispatch us because, yeah. just like I yeah. said, they don't know what the fire alarm's going off. They don't know that it's faulty. They don't know it's a bad battery. They, all they know is middle of the night, it's 2 a.m., and there's some smoke detectors going yeah. on. Yeah. So they're doing the right thing. They're getting out of the building and calling to us. Well, I can understand. Again, I'm not trying to nitpick, but I can understand that there's some kind of different sense of like a CO2 sensor, and it goes off and you can't tell. But if all you have is a smoke detector and it goes off in the middle of the night, and you're going to get up and walk around your house. If there's no smoke and someone calls the fire department because of that, I honestly believe the person that, that calls the fire department should be billed because that's like a waste of services in my opinion. I mean, I, my fire alarm went off last week, faulty battery. You get up in the middle of the night, and stuff so was going on. There's no smoke, there's a very obvious reason why a fire alarm is I'm sure the hell didn't think about calling. I didn't. I never once thought about calling the fire. You could actually get there too. Huh? We, we had one this weekend. It was in a swamp that the tenants could get to. The landlord didn't answer. They don't know if it's okay. Okay, I think I see that. Okay. You know, yeah. they, they don't so know. you're comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of folks aren't because they just don't know how it works. Okay. Well, what it means, the dispatch is going to ask, is there any smoke? Is there any fire? Is there any of this? Uh -huh. You get all that information. And then, and then when they know. dispatch us, they're going to say, person who said they're out of the house, there's no smoke, there's no fire. So it gives us a different idea of what we're going to do. Okay. But that's how we get started. I, and I got it. I mean, if you get a call, you got a call. But I'm just like, I'm really shocked. I, I, I think shocked. the point you make is not that they, they should be built. That happens. There, there is fire departments in this country that will do that stuff, that will build for services. But, the, the problem is it's a battery. That's I don't understand. I'm not saying they call us. Okay. Okay, I got it. That's all the time. Okay. Oh my god, a cat's Hey, we're on to slide one. Let's keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk time. Yeah, sorry. All right, so <laughs> all right. I, I'm quicker than that. Yeah, this, <laughs> the next part point system, right? Why do we do the point system? Because we can't guarantee how many hours we're going to have in any given quarter for pay. So if we were to say, hey, let's pay everybody $10 an hour, that's great. But we're going to blow the budget out in some quarters. We may just be at others. Um, it, so the way that we do it to stay within the guidelines with the labor board and all of that is the point system. And this is so, a fair's way for so the employees to be compensated. Basically, what happens is, is because it's take, not predictable. Right, it's not it's predictable. Not so whatever the allocated budget is, say it's fifty thousand dollars for the year. We take that, we divide it by four. At the end of each quarter, we take all of the points that members made, how do they make points? Come to incidents, Monday night trainings, they come for details, um, details special public events. education, special events, you know, <coughs> covering town, all of those things. All go in, members get points. At the end, we divide that number Right, the, the quarterly number by the total number of points, and it comes up with a dollar amount. We then go back, and each member has earned a certain number of points. Take that dollar amount, multiply it by the points. And that's what they get paid for the quarter. Pay that out on a quarterly basis. Um, the next thing is that confusing? No, I'm an engineer. <laughs> I knew that. But well, we've gone down this road a dozen times. Well, we've never seen it on paper. We can make this very easy. Just pay us 15 bucks an hour like all his guys are getting, and we're all set. Um, it's easier <laughs> to see it on paper yeah. than it is to say it's a point system. So this is why I asked for this, which I've yeah, been asking yeah. for for years. Points equal hours. Okay. basically yeah. how it works out. Yeah. But we use the word point mm -hmm. because it's not all based on one thing. It's based, well, based on calls. It's based on calls. It's based on training. It's so there's four or five different numbers. Yes, right? exactly right. Yeah. And they're getting an hour point per hour. So as they're there, as Sean just explained, we have call sheets, which we do, and I'm sure we have those. We have, we have time cards for guys that come in and have to you know, drive a truck to Scarborough and wait for it to be repaired, bring it back, and it's five hours. So we have different ways that we put all that stuff together. When we get done in each quarter, as we said, it all gets told up. And our quarterly pay is like 14 grand a quarter or something like that. And the points are divided into that, it comes out with an hourly rate. 
Assistant Chief Deputy Chief. So yeah, they are more. They are more points from the beginning. I actually think they're okay. Yeah, AC, DC. See, I was in this system, and I think you asked this the last time when Reese was here, Tim, that I came out of the system. I was in it for a while. And I think a couple of meetings ago, you said, well, you got this. No, I came out of that system and got my pay bumped up to the 15, which I make now. So when we do that, these guys all have those points, and it's because they all have additional points. If I'm not there, Sean's the guy that's got to wrap up there. And it goes right down the line. So they get a little bit more because of the extra responsibility they have. It's not so much just on call volume, it's things that they have to do on the station. Because none of us have enough time, because nobody's there at all during the daytime, to do all the other things, required paperwork, the certifications we got to do, everything that we're required. So these guys earn a little bit more on that end because of their time and responsibility and the jobs. So, so one of the things you kept asking today is, you know, do you have job descriptions? We actually have a literal two-inch binder with all of this in. So this is you know, department directive personnel for possible performance. We have probationary members. We have description of each level of you know, what a firefighter is, what a probationary, what a crew chief is, lieutenant, captain. All of that is all scrubbed out. Required training for each of those. Experience all of that as part of it, the testing. So. For us, when a member goes from being a firefighter to a crew chief, we actually put them through both a written test, a job test, where we'll take them out in some scenario, practical exam, and then depending on what level, like when I moved up to DC, I actually had three area chiefs come in and, and interview me in an oral board situation, and then finally came to a select board. So, all of those things are all built into this, these personnel department directives that we have that when you guys come down to the station, you can take it off and, and read it and see all of these. So you don't have an electronic form? We do. <clears throat> Could you share it with us? Okay. As long as it's okay with you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, just a quick, quick question on the raise. You want the whole book? Um, if it's in electronic form, it's nothing to send it. So. That's fine. So just a quick well, question, there's a lot of things in there that really don't pertain to anything that you really yeah, don't want well, to read. That's what searches for. Whatever search, I can search for whatever See, I need. Bit of it then. So, so the, the $4,000 raise for, for, for the firefighters. So firefighters, is that, I mean, I understand what you're talking about there. So does the point, uh, the point is $3, it's so going for $3.25, is that how it works for the raise? It, it, it would not. So, no. so if you look at that, if you can, uh, Flip over that piece of paper that's right in front of you there. Uh, no, the, the white one, the small piece of paper. Right in front of you. Yeah. 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 That's what we do. The thing is, that you've been around a little bit longer. Well, I've been trying for years to, just to try to get fired. Not the minimum wage. I get minimum wage. Would that be a minimum wage? Uh-uh. That's the Uh-uh. Not even close. But minimum wage, then, I mean, if you use a formula to apply it, it really depends on how many hours they work. Because they could have and lower what, points and divide, divide it into your quarterly salary you could make them $20 an hour, right? No. 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 So, no. so that, that's why I mentioned that piece of paper. Those are the yeah. so that's our hourly wage. Uh, uh, 2019 wage. each quarter. You only get that's what the, that's right. what the hourly rate is. But if they work less hours, then it's, have... it's still they get one point for that hour. So they still get, you know, so last month was actually our highest pay month or pay quarter just under ten dollars. Yeah. The quarter before that was six dollars and forty cents a point. So if a member only comes in for three hours, mm -hmm. they make eighteen bucks. That's a so chance to pay for the quarter. So, but you said it was the quarterly allocation, right? Divided by the number of points that were accumulated for the quarter, right? Right. By every month. Right, exactly. So I'm saying if you have if you don't have a lot of calls in the quarter, then your fourteen thousand dollars is spread out over Fewer points. Yeah, it, and we have data going back. That's three years worth of data, and we have even ten years further back than that. All the points that have been given out, mm -hmm. we've never, you know, like I said, last quarter was the highest we've ever had. Most of the time, the average is about seven point five, seven fifty. Mm -hmm. That that we end up in any given year per point. But so I'm just saying that 
I can see if you have fourteen thousand dollars, for example, to spend, and your calls are down. So you only got twenty calls um, in a quarter. You have all this money that's available. So why not just have more different activities? Well, we do. Great. We that's my point. <laughs> so you Monday find a way to to, yes. to make that dollar amount seven dollars and fifteen cents. Where what if you don't have to have all those necess unnecessary activities? Not that they're not all unnecessary. Every activity but, that we do that I determine somebody to get paid for is a fire department function. Something that must be done. There's no extraneous stuff that we do. We don't. Make we do so much. We do so much above and beyond that does not even go to the point system easily. You know, I spend three or four hours a day doing fire department stuff and the other things that have been piled on. Sean does that, and if not more. Right. I, I'm working for probably two dollars an hour. So. Yeah. Hey, hey, you mean all of putting this together for you guys, pulling all of those? Yeah, but I'd say for two dollars an hour, come on, do my job. <laughs> See how you like that one. I mean, I don't, I probably make five bucks an hour. But I'm responsible for people's lives. It's public service. My, my point is, it's public service and we can't make a living on it. I know and it's public service. It. And it's the same thing you're sitting here. You're doing it because you want and you have a, a need to be there or want to. It's the same thing with me over here. Yeah. I'm not doing this to break the bank because it ain't going to happen. Right. I get that. Yeah. I've been here for an awful long time. I'm damn good at what I do. I'll say it. Can I keep this? Yeah, I can give you a copy of that. Yeah, but you send it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Send it to us. I just scribbled that down. Yeah. But in, in, in what you're saying, there may be a time in the afternoon where we get three people that comes in for a call. That's the only call for the day before she gets. Yeah, maybe that one call they make twenty bucks on. But by the time you average this all out of the quarter, from all the other points that are earned, that just gets brought down and down and down. And you're asking this forever. And there's your information right yep. there on where we are. So, just so I have this formula correct, Sean, mm -hmm. it's quarterly allocation of the entire line item yep. divided by the number of points in that quarter. Yep. And from that, you arrive at the dollar amount. Yes. That isn't complicated at all. <laughs> and like I said, we, we did this last year with the select board, yeah. and there, I know there's a lot of new faces, but we've gone over this. We tried to make it so that it made sense because. Yeah. If you go to a straight hourly wage, mm -hmm. then anytime you call people in, okay. you have a minimum. Oh, yeah. I'm going to print out like this every quarter, and I hand it into Chuck, and he takes care of the payroll. There's everybody's name, and there's a column on how many points they print. Do you keep track of the types of calls as yeah. well? Yeah, they are right there. Oh, can I see that? Yep. That's the call. That's the hard track here. Um, so, can you make sure you share this PowerPoint with us? So, so we actually have this thing I've been asking for for years. This is last, that's last year's call volume. Do you also track how many people are in these calls? Yep. They have a, so we have a sign-in sheet and on every call. Okay. They sign their names so I know who's there. So you can provide us with a call, the number of people in the call. Yep. And the total instance. Yep. Anything you want. Yep, that'd be great. It's all ready to go. It might be easier to come down to the fire station and look at it. You can understand it that way. Uh, no, I actually, I'd like to um, be able to review this information at 11 o'clock at night or 3 o'clock in the morning. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I do. Um, okay. is, that, is that over coffee? <laughs> Could be a glass of wine. Um, so. All right, so. Hey, one other thing. thing. Do, do can we keep this? Can we get a list of the other categories that you're you adding there, like you said? Yeah. So, so there's a, yeah. a another piece of paper there that's time cards. That's all the time cards for this year. Time cards. And you'll that actually right there see there has an awful lot of what we assign points for that individuals earn. Some for family day, vehicle maintenance is another one. Special detail, administrative stuff because somebody's come back and do a lawyer. Uh, all those different things, and that is determined by you. I decide if these guys are on the farm. But you have like a normal set of these that you use basically and then you add things in, right? Yeah. But there's probably at least eight things that you do on a regular basis. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Training, inspections. Right. Uh, those those are probably the biggest thing. You know, outside of incidents. Incidents are 90% of the things. Yeah. Monday nights is our standing. 
being, that's when the guys get the trucks out on the road, inspect the vehicles, and then all of that is required by an FBA and by an insurance company. We have to drive the vehicles to start the home every year. Now, how many firefighters do you have? 24. Out of that 24, I probably have six or eight that are active. I have guys that are lucky they make 10 calls a year. But they are certified. And they do so they're certified. I can, I can use all of them. So you, do you certify them in the place? So they, they, they have to do a state every year? Is that an annual? No, one, one time thing, you become a certified firefighter. Firefighter one, one, firefighter one, two. Once you achieve that, you're okay. I mean, you go back and get a lot of remedial training. Yeah. And there's other certifications which you can achieve. But a guy in Rollinsford that's a level two firefighter has got the exact same amount of training as the guy in Dover, Summersworth, Boston, LA, St. Louis. It's the same stuff. There's no difference. We just because we're a call fire department does not mean that uh, we're any less than the guys who are in I take some of my guys and put them against some of these big fire departments and they really do a better job. Like that the other thing is, I'll come when you come down, Jack, we'll show you some stuff. But I have a list in my desk of people that have gone through the fire. I've been, I've been in the fire station for 34 years, I've been in the fire service for 42 years. I have a list in my desk of 92 people. three hours a day because I had to sign the state opera op opens their emergency operations center. All the emergency management directors have to sign in and log in so they know they're there. So you're getting updates on weather, what the state can provide, uh, the latest information. So when that was happening, I was probably spending two, three, four hours a day listening to a lot of this stuff and getting the information. There may be two weeks where I don't have to do anything, but monthly uh, I have to go in log in and go through some remedial training to do that. So it varies on what it is. Hopefully I never use it, to tell you the truth. So you have like a baseline number of hours that you spend each month on those? Yeah, I guess you want to call it baseline, but like I said, there's nothing cast in stone. Baseline, yes, because they have to go in and make sure that they know that I'm still the EMP. Mm -hmm. And they also added the, uh, uh, and when that was done, this summer they did it, June or July after Bob left, and, and they added They shifted it to you? They shifted it to me. You signed up for it. No, I didn't. Who did say I signed up for it? <laughs> you did. <laughs> that means it's in the background. Signed up? What do you mean I signed up? He wanted up? more work. He wanted more Well, you know, the thing, the thing is, he had, you know, the emergency manager director, whenever there's a big emergency in anybody's town, who has ultimate responsibility to run that scene and mitigate the situation? Police are fired. Oh, it's fire. You, you look it's at me. The, the accident. Statewide, it's fire. It's yeah. me. It's, a, it's, it's in the RSA. Okay. The state made the highest ranking fire official on the scene is control of that scene. Okay. That falls under the EMD, but it also falls under my job as fire chief. It falls on my back. How about the ambulance? Like, I know the contract um, was a back and forth for a while, but other than that, is there normal communication with your yeah. How often do you do if it's not me, it's shown. Mm -hmm. You go to a lot of calls with them, they want to come over to training, I want you guys to come down and look at the email you know, so they just put in service. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that go on, but we weren't constantly like that. And the reason why that was added, I put that on there, was part of the reason why I should get the increase is the fact that we never had the, nobody ever minded the contract before. So I wrote the check and off it went. With this increase, when you read the uh, new contract, there was four or five things that we added that gave us a little bit more control over what they were doing. There was a time when they would come over, they got to have two licensed EMTs. Sometimes they would come over without that. There were some things that they needed to make, uh, certain stipulations. So those were written in, and it's kind of fallen on the meeting to watch and, and take care of all those issues, whether it be call volume or uh, 
training issues or whatever. So somebody just to kind of checks and balances on our contract to make sure they are living up to the things that are in the contract. Um, so, uh, I think I have three more things, right? So emergency equipment testing was the, the third thing you guys asked about. Um, this is again, it's not anything that we can control. NFPA, DOT, uh, ISO, I'll say. Yeah, your, your pump tests have to be done yearly. ISO comes in and audits you if we don't have them, and the insurance rate goes up for the town. DOT, every air pack that we carry has a DOT exception on it or exemption on it. If those bottles aren't tested every five years, we're out of compliance. It's so, like, do we just get this air pack to see? It's every five years, so we get the air packs in 2015 and we just have them hyper tested on the oh, okay. I think it was, oh, it was 2020. 2020. So, so, it was so it was the staff piece, mm -hmm. but the, the actual packs themselves have to be air flow tested every year. The new filling station that we just got, once a quarter, they have to come out and sample the air and that it's making mm -hmm. and make sure that it doesn't have any carbon dioxide and then we have to post two great big things in the fire station to show our compliance. So okay. that's why we increase on that line item. Um, right. So the vehicle fuel was the next one. Highly unpredictable. It, it, it depends on call volume, the price of fuel. So we actually look at, we'll go to the state garage, we'll go to Irving, and we'll go to Cumberland Farms, and we'll buy it where it's the cheapest. Can buy it? We cannot. So we do use Bright Express Fox cards. That's supposed to give us further discounts. That's controlled by the, the town. Um, you'll notice that our budget, this, this was one of the areas the stock board got last year to try oh, yeah. to beat that reduction. Yeah. So we reduced it further this year. I think it was just a $50 right. um, reduction. It, it probably, we grew at 102% of the budget last year, so it probably should go back up to where it was. I think Jack was concerned that you were reducing the fuel. It, it, it probably should go up. It was something that I didn't realize the select board had changed it after we had submitted budget last year. So I, I just to set that line in control. I mean, we may just have to go to a call and take five miles to drive to it, but we may have to truck run for the next 15 hours doing pumping operations or something. So, so the last thing you mentioned, you asked a bunch of questions around SIP, around the vehicle exhaust system. Uh, so I actually have done a lot of work around this. I, I think probably everybody understands it's a leading cause of no death for firefighters now. Um, what we're putting in for into our bodies through all of these carcinogens in the station is just as bad. So if you look, this is actually the, the Rollinsford station down here. It doesn't show up as well <laughs> up here, but the ceiling has great big black marks on it from all of the exhaust. Right. And that's all of our gear sitting right there. So every time we start a vehicle, our gear is getting covered with all of the exhaust particulates. But didn't you have a solution? Like, isn't there like a, a hose system that you use now? So, so we can, that's what's in CIP. That's, that's so we, we don't have one now. There's nothing in the station. That's what's in CIP for 2022. So you've never had anything to exhaust out of there? No. So the, the good news is that five years ago we got quotes. They were incredibly expensive in the $75,000 range. I went and got updated quotes. And it's come down significantly. We can probably do this for closer to forty thousand dollars. Here's your gift. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I know I've asked this question before. So what? Do you guys have done question with you guys? I know this is it's just out. But do you like the first thing you guys do is open the door and then stop the door? So we open the door on the way Not to that the that vehicle. vehicle. Mm -hmm. As soon as the vehicle guys. started. Oh, yeah, that's a ramp. Well, guys are finished being ready to go at that point. So, so, so it still feels like it's up. I agree. I, I mean, if this was 30 years ago, I wouldn't even care, right? But it's not. So. Well, yeah, medical things have changed. And just over this past weekend, they added a guy to the memorial, the firefighter memorial, Bunker. He used to be as the chief in Moon thing. He died two years ago, and it's the first substantiated uh, uh, on the job death caused by cancer. And they tied a lot of it into the vehicle exhaust. So he was achieving 
Jack or Kim, do you guys have any comments about that? It's something that's getting very, very intense to look at the answers. Well, I, I'm happy to hear that we might have a price on it. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm just wondering if that's all. I mean, the fact that we don't have any solution for it now, I thought there, there was one, but we had um, a method of venting already. I think there were. Yeah, no, there's only those two systems. One, it's like a, it hangs from the ceiling, vacuums it up, and the other one, as you said, can there's a hose which attaches to the exhaust. And so that's what you're proposing is a hose system? So what this is the system it? down here yeah. is that back system. So what happens is, is every time you open a door, start a vehicle, that kicks on. It actually has a great big filter. It's a negative vacuum and sucks everything out. It sucks everything up into it, filters on. Mm -hmm. This system is about $6,000 cheaper than that system. The other big thing that you see with the hose system on that top the owner is, is that there's moving parts. And what happens is, is the boot doesn't get put on exactly right, and you end up driving out and you drag the hose. This is this is the cheaper solution, and that would be the needs of the owner. So that is the system. Talk to other fire departments who use that. So Dover yeah. has this system. Uh, yeah, both of them where I came from, both systems. This is much more prevalent. The, the yellow hose system is much more prevalent. Um, you know, basically, that's a cool cell flow and north flow is called final event. Um, and so the hoses uh, hang down and they sit on the track. And as the fire truck pulls out, it goes all the way to the end of the garage door and releases. You know, the other caveat to this whole thing is the fact that. I've been needing to get the fire station more as use it for a shelter if we need it for the incident in town. Because otherwise it's here. And this just does not have the facility to house that many folks. That does because it's got kitchens, it's got bathrooms, it's got a lot more space. And if we had an incident, whether it be a big ice storm like we had 15 years ago, there's no power for like that week that we were all out, or whether it be the train falls off the track and some chemical contaminates, whatever it is, a flood, but we need to open an emergency shelter, it's the fire station. Now, if we're in the fire station and we've got 30 people housed in there for whatever reason, and we're running fire trucks out on a busy day with a lot of calls, or while they're there, they get exposed to this time, time, time. Not just the fire guys that understand it. It could be this is a shelter with people that we have to take care of housing with. So now we're exposing citizens to stuff that they should not have to be exposed to. But you don't have equipment in there, they're in there. You wouldn't be able to have equipment in people in there. Like sure, I could. Yeah, put the fire truck someplace in February. It's still going to park in there. There's three rooms out the back where we could put individuals in if we need the housing. We have a training room. We have the huh? I don't see that as a good solution. A shelter with all the equipment in it. But anyways, that's a whole different. The kids wouldn't go. It's, right. it's not a long-term shelter. Right. It's a short-term to bring people here until they can open the shelter. In summer, short, it's an actual shelter. Shelter is something else. Like you shelter the same, but. We don't have many options in this community to do that. We have the Legion. Um, so, is that installed? The, the numbers that you're getting, is that installed systems or is that just equipment? So, that is installed. The one, the final event one for 47, we call it, um, is everything about the electrical work. The um, airbag system, which is the, the bottom one here. Is forty thousand six hundred and some odd dollars, and that's everything electrical included. So, you know, if, if you guys were to say, you know, final event, that's what's more prevalent, that's what we want to do. I would say you budget fifty thousand. If you're good with the the other one, you know, that forty one is probably a good number. Of points, right? And you do want to take a tour, plan to take a fire station in our neighboring community and this system. What was the first one you said about That's what it's called, Plano. That, that's okay, so 50, top 50 or 41, got it. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you were talking about 50. No, the, okay. the two systems. Yeah. And, and again, yeah. try to do the research and yeah, yeah. give you the guys the information. Plano is SIP. All right. That's in a SIP, right? Yeah, this is the one SIP item. You guys had some questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what was the other question? I appreciate you guys giving us all this information tonight, and I understand you can make this market, but I don't think I can feel ready to make decisions 
for all of this to um, We don't have to. No, we don't. Right. The stair budget's not even proposed. We never will. I don't think we have to. No, I haven't heard anything budget to be No, I think it's yeah, tomorrow week. I have. Uh, no, they're not tomorrow. Probably a Wednesday night. So Wednesday I have transfer highway. Yeah. And I'm not sure what the Well, it's supposed to be SIP highway and transfer, but they're not going to be transfer. Well, they can do transfer. It's just at yeah. So yeah, we can do that. We don't have to have this budget ready for that. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, we can think through this. And yeah. We can yeah, just come back again. Yeah. yeah. We have to give me a chance to visit. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Sean. Can you send us all the information that you want? It's definitely right here. I think, I think we're all just contacting. Yeah. So, one last thing we need to do um, before we go to work, my friend, 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 my all right, I'm fine with everything and we can create a training meeting or something for So what are you going to do tomorrow? I'm just going to bring this up real quick because yeah. I have this letter that was presented to me. Um, and it's Thank the you board. It's actually coming to the board. Yeah. Have you guys seen this letter? Which one? So it's about someone that has a buildable lot in Germany and they're looking for us to... Okay. Why it has to go through the new out of because it has to do it. Okay. Sure that would be on the... Planning. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I, saw that. Yeah, right. I, don't, yeah. I don't need to do anything this time. Right. Okay. Yeah. We agreed, and I sent an email to Brian that we would plan it for the next regular right. session. Right. I just don't want to leave this guy hanging out here. Should we send him a note back? Oh. Yeah. You know what? I, don't, I mean, just so that they uh, recognize that we got it. Thank you. We're responding to it. I don't yeah. know. I, 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 I'll give him a quick call and just tell him to work. I, I got his name. Just tell him it's on the agenda. We'll, yeah. we'll get to it. So, before we end, I, the two things I got to do um, is get a hold of Chuck so we can talk about the Warren articles we made. That's my to do. And we got to check with him. And I'll give this gentleman a call just to say that we're. And the other thing when we talk to Chuck is about coverage. Coverage, what do you need for coverage? Thank you. So I get a check. Well, I, I already got an email and he emailed all of us. At, at the right, I'm just going to do, yep. I'm going to tell him that sure. when I talk to him tomorrow, he's going to settle for welfare. These are the proposals for the um, five, five event and the airbag system. Um, he gave one ac accidental copy that can be two of this instead of one of each, one for the post system and one for the air system. Yeah. Um, so I'll have to make a copy of the airbag one. We're going to get a mark. Okay. Right, but if you, if there's one of these, I think we can get that to Paul. Yeah. Oh. It's a Give me the other one tomorrow. I think Paul is We can have Chuck um, make a copy of that second one. I can just ask him to make, which one do you think? Oh, uh, this yeah. one. Yeah. One of these. Um, so, so do we want to wait until tomorrow to do the board appointments, um, ex officio board appointments? I just want to do it right now. It's in good either way. I don't I mean, there's no public. Yeah. Huh? I think it needs a little discussion. It's not a problem. We'll do it. Um, we'll, I mean, yeah, it's sorry, close. So what do we have on the agenda for tomorrow? So tomorrow like, night um, is a recreation budget is coming in. Right um, and, yeah. So Celia is going to come back in. Because her budget is very ambiguous. It doesn't yeah. line up with the presentation that she gave. So I asked her, I gave her what we have in yep. the budget that Carolyn put in. And ask her to try to resolve her budget to this. Yeah, she's she's kind of left in the dark by herself. Mm -hmm. Is she doing that herself? Well, it was, I mean, there's nobody. It was. Uh, I don't know. There's it was a small. few people, but it's a very small group, two or three. Mm -hmm. oh, so that. we need to try to help her. Huh? It's that. All right. So who else is coming besides Rick tomorrow? Um. So what we have open is police coming. Um. John's budget. Was clear. Oh, sad. Yeah, yeah right. I think it was clear um, because his budget was flat. Yeah. Um, and so we had recreation. Um, we need to may, maybe or maybe not resolve fire. Um, and then there was appointment. The appointment's correct. So um, we're probably going to get an album up. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be very Six. long because we really have rec and um, town clerk. Oh, yeah. um, was another one. Oh, yeah. One second. Give me 30 seconds. Oh, executive office. 
to an executive office. Mm -hmm. um, I have some concerns about what we have budgeted for a town administrator. Um, and so that needs discussion. So we have executive right. office, and we have town clerk and recreation. It's executive office. And tax collector, for that matter. There's no, no proposing piece of tax collector. Executive office is town clerk, a bookkeeper, so, so that's something that has to be brought up too. I'll let you guys talk about more than me, but there's no proposed increase for tax collector. Right. So that's on the question. And that was, you know, well, we'll talk about that. Yeah. So we have we have a few, but they're not, I think that they're yep. probably not as significant as fire and highway work. Okay. So I'm gonna make a motion to and maybe Okay. I'll try to look at the yeah. I'll try to adjourn. Yeah. I, I, I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So is it like this every week? No, no that's so long. I don't use it. We're using it for a couple hours. Well, last, the last one was only like an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah,